Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Climb. It's me and Matthew Bell here once again to discuss Master Duel, its formats, and everything we're going to do to try and get to what is now Diamond 1. Yeah, guys, good to see... Well, I'd say good to see you, but you can't see uh, you can't see us, and we can't see you. But yeah, no, it's great to be back on and finally see some action in the game, some actual updates that matter. This is something that the game has been severely lacking since March, and I am extremely excited because I have no idea what any of these cards do. I literally do not follow the TCG; I exclusively follow Master Duel. So today we're going to get a dive in. If you're somebody who's not familiar with the new cards that have been put in. Dan's going to be an expert. He's going to walk us through all that. And I'm going to be asking a lot of new questions before I decide exactly which deck I'll take to Diamond 1 whenever I feel like it, because I can do that. Yeah, so a big thing was that the launch pool for Master Duel was basically Dawn of Majesty, Synchro Storm, but they kind of cut those two sets in half. And the last time we actually got an update, if you could even call it that, it just gave us the rest of the cards from those sets. So this is really the first time it's actually felt like Master Duel has updated for me since the launch of the game. We got a new Duel Pass, a couple new solo modes, a new structure deck, a new ban list, actually new sets worth of cards that progressed the game forward a few months. And I feel also as if like Master Duel picked like the worst time of year to pick for where it was going to start. It's in that sweet spot right after like the World Championship where like the game always calms down. Uh, usually you have like groups of four to eight sets of support for uh, decks and the first batch of them like decks just don't do anything and that's really where we were sitting was like we had like the bad parts of the Despia deck the bad parts of like Gizmex and stuff it wasn't really until Burst of Destiny where we actually got like Sword Soul, Fluanderies, the rest of the Despia things the stuff that actually defined the meta for the last half of 2022 and the first of 2021 and the first half of 2022 uh master duel decided to release with a card pool that was like just before that but after everything else already got killed that had been dominating 2021 at the time so we really were just kind of playing with like old decks drytron eld like things that were already a year old even by master duels standards and master duel itself was already a year behind the physical game so it's absolutely wonderful to have a lot of these cards added. It's still not all of Burst of Destiny. I haven't found the Fluanderies cards yet personally, but it is the ones everyone was looking for. Like Anaconda has been in Master Duel since launch and now it finally does something noteworthy. Uh, just a lot. Like it's, it's nice to finally have the game feel like there's something in it to work towards and decks that actually feel like you're playing against them instead of just a, this is floodgate deck a floodgate deck b and so on and so forth absolutely like literally the last day of the april format i remembered on my main account oh yeah i hadn't hit the top rank and i just decided yeah i'll do it and then it took me an evening and a little bit of the next day and i got the rank one in a day on at Ignister. it wasn't even a challenge and these changes, if you want to open up the card shop and show some of the new cards, I get the feeling Agnesis is going to be a lot harder to climb with uh, now that uh, some of the new cards are. So I've definitely got to learn a little bit about this. And I'm really excited to see how you can walk us through exactly what these these new cards mean, uh, how how to build decks, and yeah. what's going to, what's the, how the meta is going to change. Because if you've been in a limited list, didn't really kneecap the decks that were that strong uh very very harshly but it does make them weaker than the new cards that we just got in which means that there's going to be a power discrepancy and giving those new decks a chance absolutely right? so definitely we we did already discuss the ban list update and uh I, I did go over like oh it's super obvious that we're about to get destroy phoenix enforcer because i hit fusion destiny and stuff so if you guys are curious about that, that is actually on our YouTube channel, and we're not going to be discussing too much about the ban list specifically on this one, especially with so much new to cover. Uh, most of the new stuff is in the shop, so I'll go to shop after so that we don't have to zigzag back and forth. Um, you want to start with the new solo modes first? Yes, <laughs> but just very briefly. There are two new solo modes. There is just this uh ghost from the past icon to like practice mode one which i spent all morning finishing uh not fun <laughs> but not, really not not really meant for me to be fair but uh as anyone who's played through solo mode can tell you there is a lot of just it holds your hand for the first turn and then says like okay now that you know how 
this basic combo where it's attack for game and you can move on. Um, that's not what this one did. This one says like, all right, I'm gonna force you to summon this monster and then special that one and make this particular XZ's monster. And then now you're on your own, finish the duel. And it makes you actually play out this like 10 turn duel with a starter deck against a starter deck. And it's a crapshoot. Like RNG starts getting added to it. And it's like, even the play they force you to make at the start of the game is not the optimal one for the hand they give you. <laughs> and like, I, I recall, I believe it's this one here. I'm not going to like go into them. I'm just going to highlight it with like my cursor. But yeah, this one here, uh, it actually took me more than one try. Battling boxers. <laughs> yeah, the, the opponent's like guaranteed opening hand makes like this guy here, and your opening hand is guaranteed to put it on like zero attack, but then it detaches three materials and gets up to like 24, and you had to make a Gagaga Xyz monster, so you couldn't make your Utopia they give you. And then like they go into like this dude, and he says when he dies, bring back four monsters from the graveyard, so they just get to go into. It, you're frequently staring down things that are like 3,000 plus, and they always open on this field spell to boost everyone by 500, so that one sucked. Um, but for what the most the, part, they're very easy. What are the rewards for this? Are there any gem rewards? Because uh, the yes. first practice tier had uh, around 2,400 gems that you could get just by doing a Link Summon, Synchro Summon, Fusion Summon, and Pendulum Summon. Yeah, so this one is riddled with just like, here's like a playset of like, the dumbest Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever. No one's ever gonna like use. Just like toolish little things. Uh, I believe the last one. Yeah, the last one gives a hundred gems. But um, there is this guy, the Book of Moon Mate. <laughs> if that's your thing. <laughs> they spend so much time making these mates. They are not blue eyes, white dragons. That mm -hmm. is shocking. Wait, so how how long did this take you? About six hours, would you say? Oh, or no, no, not six two? hours. But it was probably like three hours to cl climb through all that. Three and... hours for two hundred gems. You'd have made more money farming World of Warcraft gold in two thousand fourteen. <laughs> and I, I got this part of the way through the danger one, and the the danger one does have uh, like cards that I, I guess matter. Um, this one here, I haven't actually got to, but this one has a jackalope mate. <laughs> danger. Jackalope. That is cool that i want so i'm gonna have to play some solo mode for that guy and then there's 200 gems on that and the nessie icon uh what i th what killed me you're gonna love this wait until so the the two decks they get are gonna be danger dark world and danger diabolos but wait until you see the loner deck that they're giving you on this one <laughs> oh if only we hadn't just done a guide on how to play this deck on the youtube channel <laughs> Oh, I'd be so, so clueless on what I'm supposed to do. But wait, hold on a minute. They're not giving you multiply. That's like the best card. No, no, they want you to play. It's supposed to be the danger one. So this is just a variant of the danger deck they want you to play. There's no five-star Twilight either. Oh, oh, okay. So they just took all the fun stuff for Kribos and took it out. Mm-hmm. They give you crime uh... and punishment, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, yeah, Crime and Punishment is literally having the good cards of the Karibo deck taken out of the Karibo deck. I can't see this loner deck because unfortunately I haven't beaten the previous one, but um, you can see like they did give it just a Danger Dark World deck like yeah. right out of the tin. But um, they've also added to solo mode those little stars you see. They give them difficulties now. They tell you like out of five how hard the match is going to be. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh... I like that in a sense that new well, in fact, all that can really do is intimidate new players because any experienced player, I get the impression, I could be wrong, and chat can sort of let me know. I think that as soon as I think of PvE content, I think, oh, it's going to be a joke. Or it's going to be one of those dual puzzles that somebody sat down and spent four hours figuring out how to make the most complicated game situation ever. Hey, Moki Moki, so I haven't got one of those yet. So, but, this is another thing they updated. In the new update, Moki Moki now can get angry if you click on him. That's actually really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any new mates in the shop? So yeah, uh, that's why I said when I get to the shop, like I'm gonna cover. There's so many. Oh yeah, sorry. Things. I am super excited because I haven't looked. Like I've been saving my reactions for this live stream, so, so I have absolutely. Uh, there there no is idea. no new mates in the shop, but they did add a new dual field, the Realm of Danger. Ah, that's cool. And they added two new sleeves, fire and wind, and the fire ones honestly look really, really nice. Yeah, they do pop really nicely on the field. And then they added a couple new icons, Albaz and Colossus were added. 
Did they? No, they didn't take anything out. No. Thunder Dragon Colossus. <laughs> uh, if you saw that as an icon, I don't know how I'd feel about the opponent. There was rumors. Uh, people like data mined the update and found another one of these that has infinite impermanence, but that did not come. They've also found tons of other mates that have not come, such as like a dragon made one that transforms during your battle phase, which is super cool. Don't know when oh, they get that. They but... better put that in a bundle that costs more than five bucks. <laughs> the, like uh, if they, they like to make money off of it. There is a fourth structure deck that has been added. Uh, this was one of the things that had already been out by April of 2021 that the game was missing. Um, includes this card. This was the only card from AC01 that wasn't in Master Duel. So they've found a way to put him in here. Along with, uh, well, now you can see, like, anything I had four of, I already owned before getting this deck. But, like, I didn't have a lot of this Cyber Dragon stuff, so that was kind of nice to get. Um, and then yes. the signature thing is this guy, the new boss monster for Cyber Dragons. Cyber Dark End Dragon. Must be fusion summoned or special summoned by tributing one level 10 or lower Cyber Dark fusion monster equipped with Cyber End Dragon. That is quite a few hoops. Yep. Unaffected by opponent's activated effects. Uh, once per turn, you can equip one monster from Eva Gregor to this card. This card can attack a number of times each battle phase up to a number of equipped cards to it. So if you MST the equipped card, it can't attack. Mm. Okay. That's really interesting. Like, I absolutely love the Cyber Dark side of uh, Zane's deck. It did not get the love that it deserved when it came out. And then in the Duelist pack, it got a few updates, but it was still kind of weak. Does this actually make it uh, playable? That's the question. So, the other thing... <laughs> oh, Cyber Dark was already playable, honestly. But another thing you'll notice is that, like, this deck is playable right out of the tin in the Fusion Festival, which is the other thing that they announced with this update. The next up, the next event is the Fusion Festival, and we can see the Forbidden List for it already and start deck building for it. We just can't play it yet. That's really cool. So you're playing True Draco? Uh, probably. <laughs> with, like, goes, with, with goes and match, yeah. Yeah, okay. something. It, it's gonna, yeah. They, uh, but obviously the main attraction of the new updates is gonna be the two new selection packs that they added, Refined Blade and Fusion Potential. These are oh. the cards, like, people have been waiting for these since Master Duel opened, and they're people. in uh, selection packs, so you don't even, like, if you get an ultra rare, it's gonna be one of these ultra rares type thing. Uh, all eight cards you pull will come from this pool, so on and so forth. You do have the Sword Soul stuff from Burst of Destiny, uh, Destiny Hero Plasma, I think that's actually a reprint for... Um, that is a reprint, yeah. yeah for the sake of uh, Phoenix Enforcer, which is... This is the card that's been more or less running the game and the TCG for the last little while. Every deck that can play this card has been. As well as the Despia deck getting its... Uh, well, this is a reprint, but this is the boss monster that it was desperately missing last time, as well as a fusion spell that we'll get to. It also finally gave us Lord of the Heavenly Prison, one half of the pair of cards in Burst of Destiny that allow you to search for any Yu-Gi-Oh card in the game. This guy... If you can believe it, it, says search your deck for any spell or trap in Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's another one in Burst of Destiny called Small World that says search for any monster and happens to be a spell so they can get each other to get any other card in the game as necessary. Um, this card... And that's disgusting. Yes. Uh, it's probably going to be Vanity's Emptiness or something like that because when, whenever a opponent directly searches and activates Vanity Emptiness from their deck using the shenanigans with the Mecha Phantom Beast, uh, mm -hmm. it's... Whatever a deck can do that, I've already sort of... So I've already got, a, like, the salt is already coming out of my eyes. There is a caveat with uh, the spells and traps, is that they do banish during the end phase. So if you get a continuous spell or trap, it should be Imperial Iron Wall, so that they're permanently under Lancia, because Iron Wall protects itself from being banished. But um, if you happen to hard draw your Imperial Iron Wall that you were playing for this guy, then, yes, he can get Imperial Order and you can just... <laughs> It on there like they die. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. Is an Imperial Order forbidden in both formats now? No, in fact, part of the update was new animations for a bunch of cards, including Imperial Order, who now has the <laughs> thing show up on the field and wave his hand at everybody. So it literally, the one of the most oppressive Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever printed all the way back in Fairy Server, what the probably the first secret rare that mattered. Actually, no, no, it's two, because the Jinzo was in the same set. And they decided we're gonna we're gonna rattle this card. I can't go into too much details because that was in a time where I was working for KDE. And then the card is still too strong. 
It gets forbidden in the TCG. Is it forbidden in the OCG? It is, yeah. And then Master Duel said, let's make an animation for it because this card's pretty good. Yep. They didn't say, hmm, this is a problem. Maybe we should not put our resources in a card that clearly makes the game unfun. So as far as animations go, uh, as we've mentioned, like the god cards were missing them, for example. They have added new animations to the Abyss Actor Boss Monster Superstar, Arm Dragon Thunder Level 10, Armatile the Chaos Phantom, Bujin Takes Asanoo, Celestial Night Lord Parshaf, Danger Nessie, the Flower Cardian Moonflower, the Skull King Fossil Warrior, Geomath Mech Final Sigma, Ghost Rick Alucard, Marincess Wonderheart, Maya Sendru Diabak, Nepsis the Sacred Flame, Numbers C88 and C101, Penguin Brave, for some reason, Protecting Spirit Loagaeth, Rainbow Dragon, Reptilian Echidna, Ruddy Rose Dragon, S-Force Justify, Starry Knight Starry Dragon, Vampire Voivode, Wind Witch Diamond Bell, and Yukiona the Absolute Zero Mayakashi, but still not the God cards somehow. And then of these new cards, this guy, Lord of the Heavenly Prison has one, Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer has one, the Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Sheng Ying has one, and then so does Yukio Punk the Amazing Dragon, all of which are in this set, not the other one. And the then... artwork for some of these cards is gorgeous. I just sorry to cut in, but no, like so these new ones, I've not seen them before. So this is like the first time looking at them. The uh, if you're familiar with Dark Hole and Monster Reborn, how they have not necessarily like artwork animations where the artwork is just kind of cut out and moved around like the summon animations, they actually have like a special animation to them. They've added things like that for Harpy's Feather Duster, a big like feather like sweeps the whole board away. Uh, Imperial Order, as I mentioned, the old man just shows up and waves his hand. Uh, Crossout Designator has a pretty cool one. Lightning Storm just literally lightning bolts everything on the board. Skill Drain has one. Solemn Judgment has one. Red Reboot has cool. one. And Imper Infinite Impermanence has two. Uh, it has one where like the monster itself looks like it like almost goes like underwater. It's kind of neat. And if you had a permanent set when you activate it, the entire column will like turn blue for a sec. Oh, thank God! Yeah, they needed that something because so people like myself don't accidentally play cards into the column that they flipped Imperial uh, Infinite Impermanence in earlier. Mm. They but also... like, I like that they're make they're clearly making it more desirable to stream the game. They're making it very visual uh, for the esports side of it, and that's probably part of their marketing strategy. Is like we want people to get like excited by explosions and all the cool stuff coming up on screen. Mm. Especially oh, uh, on that topic, yeah. they have updated a lot of the visual effects as well. Um, they've like just like shuffling and revealing and stuff. When I used to use Disciples of the Draco Phoenix to shuffle back three true Draco cards, it would go like, ba ba. Bah, to show the three cards, now it just goes ba 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 and puts the cards back. Like it's way faster. Um, dual and when you make a dual room, they now have like a speed chess thing, like a short option for the clock where you have to play very quickly. Um, as we saw when we were in solo mode, they've added like difficulty stars and the loading screens are a little faster. The missions screen has a ton of updates. They categorize all the missions now by like login types and stuff. Um, if you don't own a card that you save in the deck and then you get the deck uh get the card later it will actually add it to your deck now which is really nice and they added a new feature to batch generate all the cards you don't own in your deck list as long as you have enough points to do it that is oh my god that is so helpful <laughs> the amount of time wasted just crafting up uh cards searching for the right clicking then going into the menus and stuff this is Overall, the UI updates are very, very, very good. Uh, lots of great quality of life stuff, which is going to help Master Duel uh, be taken probably a little bit more seriously. Because I know quite a few players joined the game and then they dropped off when they didn't see enough changes. It almost felt like as a product, it was a push it out and then leave it kind of deal. And clearly they've been working behind the scenes on this. And this update seems fantastic. Yeah. The, uh, the forbidden list for the fusion event, <laughs> I realized I didn't go over the rewards and stuff for that. Um, someone was just asking. Uh, the rewards for the fusion event are a bunch of gems and they're all front loaded. And then yet another mate, instant fusion, the cup of noodles fusion monster. That is, okay, I might have to get that. <laughs> and then like with the Synchro Festival, it switches to fusion reward tickets and the fusion festival title. Oh, the title actually has, it's written in purple. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess the That's sinker cool. one was written in white and we just couldn't tell. <laughs> oh yeah, it just looked like every other one, right? So how, yeah. how would you know? You get this uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer loner deck, just Destiny Hero deck, but it's a Phoenix Enforcer deck. Um, you have the Heart of a Sky with Purse Clouds. It's just Fright Purse. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's a quote from Arc 5. Didn't watch that one. And uh, Pleasure Devouring Venom Dragon, the Preda Plant Fusion deck, are the loner decks. <laughs> Pleasure Devouring. It's, seriously, who, who broke that down and thought, oh, this would be fine? It sounds like the worst Tinder date of your life. Looks like I got oh. one of that guy and... Everyone else was left alone. Oh no, one maiden. Okay. Okay, maiden so yeah, festival. you can't just. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, that's cool. Just uh, get yourself a title in. Well, how long do you have to take you? Probably less than two weeks, depending on your. Like a day. Your schedule? A, oh, a day. <laughs> I literally just played the uh, gem rewards out. 44 duels, I think. It's 500 per win. Yeah, 40. I did it in 44 duels last time, so whatever. But um, yeah, the Fusion Festival obviously has a forbidden list on it, and looking at it is always atrocious because it includes like every synchro Xyz and Link in the game, and also already forbidden cards. So the forbidden list has like two thousand cards on it. But um, the the ones that like people are gonna obviously care about are like what is like an effect monster, for example, that's on there, like the things that make this a different format. And that is mm. Christia, Multifaker and Scythe, Every Barrier Statue, Dark Lord Nurse Repicule, Fairy Tale Luna, finally, Exodia's yeah, Head, good. the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, which means they know that that card is borked, and yet they still allow it to just run around. Uh, Fusion Devourer, Ghost Trick Skeleton, all the self FTK cards, Gizmic Orochi, because I'm not allowed to have fun, which means neither is anyone else, so I'm gonna play True Draco. Uh, Inspect Border, uh, Cephalon the Ultimate Time Lord, Vanity's Fiend and Ruler, but not emptiness. Uh, and then, like, a bunch of ritual guys Ben 10, Perfection, Ultimateness, Unicorn, like, they just killed any ritual deck that exists. Uh, as far as, like, burn cards that got hit, Chain Strike, the one that no one plays. Uh, Domain is gone. Final Countdown, Jackpot 7, like your win condition cards. Um, Performer Pal Popper up so you can't self TK. Pot of Extravagance and Prosperity so you can't turn your fusions into draws. And then like a bunch of stupid trap cards. Imperial Order is banned in the Fusion Festival. I guess they want people to be able to play Poly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you can't play Polymerization, it almost feels like the Fusion Festival is not that fun. Yeah, Jarichon Draconids is legal in this one and wasn't in the previous one, so there's that. Uh, and then, like, they limited Dynamite Knight and Maiden, Mishion, Planet Pathfinder, uh, Eldlick the Golden Lord is at one, Megalith Full is at one, Phantasm Spiral Battle and Skill Drain and Summon Limit are all at one, and Rathion the Time Lord and Generator Boss Stage are at two, uh, for reasons, I guess. Super Poly is legal according to Dragon FAF. Well, I guess it kind of has to be, right? Yeah. Let's if you have an fusion event and you don't have the strongest fusion card ever printed, why are we here? <laughs> so I guess on the topic of fusion, let's take a look at the fusion potential pack. So yeah, uh, we, we have like the Lunalite uh, Saber Dancer. Uh, how many of these? I own oh, none. Look at me go. Big old set. But. Um, it has like the Lunalite things, the Ritual Beast things, to fall on Dark Lord if you still want to play Dark Lord Despia, although you no longer have to. Um, this guy, who's actually hilarious. That guy is insanely good. Yeah, I lost a duel to this guy in uh, Silver as I was climbing up. Um, I, what was I, I think I was playing, yeah, True Draco. <laughs> And the guy activated Ancient Gear Fusion, and I was like, okay. And then he fused four from his hand and dropped this thing. And it's like, well, my skill drain was face down. I wish I had chained that. And I have nothing 4,500 or bigger in the deck. Can't cut its attack in half. I just lost. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, it just Is runs you over. <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean, it's really cool. Ancient Gear Fusion is the one where you can fuse using Ancient Gear Monsters from your deck, right? Only so they stand there on the Ancient spells. Gear Golem is one of the materials, though. Ah, okay. So you've got to put it in your deck. Yeah, and as well as, like, the fusion monster has to have, like, Ancient Gear Golem as, like, a named material or something. Yeah, it's Overload Fusion is, like, the main one, right? Yes. Uh, whenever you play against the Ancient Gear deck, that was one of the things where it's just, like, they rip one of those and you just, they can just blow over, like, 
two, three monsters and you're just dead out of nowhere and you're like, oh. So, all right, you are working on a Despia deck, right? Or yes. have you already finished that? Uh, I, I've been working on it, but as soon as I saw the leaks, I was like, oh, the deck becomes real on Monday. So Monday is when I want to actually like put this thing together. This set, as we were looking at, as I said, this card was what Despia is trying to like actually summon and now can, as well as their own fusion spell called Branded in Red, which is finally in the game. This is the card that makes Despia a deck. Uh, the quick play spell. Target one Despia monster or fallen Albers in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then you can apply the following effect. Fusion summon one level eight or higher fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand or field, but you cannot attack directly this turn. Quick play fusion, can't attack directly from your extra deck by banishing monsters from your hand or field. It's, I guess it's because it's super searchable, it's why yeah, that card so is. This guy here, a Luber, who happens to be in two selection packs at the same time, because he's in that other one. Uh, when he's summoned, he adds a branded spell or trap from your deck to your hand. And now he has a fusion spell that he can actually add. Oh my god, this thing isn't... Why? Okay. That's an interesting decision on their part, considering Ruler's Mask's chase cards are the same cards that are in that other set. And they're both selection packs, so... That is quite interesting. I wouldn't have crossed them over to split people's gems up if it right. was me, but... Yeah, so the oh, interesting. cards are in this, and the Sword Soul cards are in this, are the other ones. Sword Soul is a deck, it's probably the deck you're going to see the most. Of all the, like, number one deck you are going to see on Master Duel going forward is probably the Sword Soul deck. This was the deck that, at this point in time when the TCG was at the same time of year, November of 2021, this was the deck, it was Sword Soul Tenny, it was the best deck. Uh, super easy to put together, super easy to play, very hard to stop it from playing. If you put up a board with four negates on it, Sword Soul has five in hand, so they're still going to play. So this is basically the replacement for me playing Agnistas, is yes. what you're saying? Uh, if, if you want to look at it that way, absolutely. There is nothing wrong with blinding second one Sword Soul and just throwing your whole hand at your opponent one card at a time until they run out of stuff. You're gonna have to teach me to play this because I have no idea what any of these cards are. The artwork looks disgustingly good. Yeah, it's uh, a pair of warrior dudes, although they're worms. Uh, a guy and a girl, Moye and Taya. Uh, I should find Taya. Yeah, so Taya here says it's just four stars, eighteen hundred, which has never been a losing combination. That says banish a sword soul card or worm from your graveyard to get yourself a tuner token that's level four. So. If you you can just make a level 8 synchro straight off yeah, the bat. Yeah, if you Foolish Burial and Normal Summon this guy, here's your level 8 synchro. Uh, while that token's in a monster zone, the player who summoned it can't use their extra deck except to synchro summon. And then, mm -hmm. if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can send a Sword Soul card or Worm Monster from your deck to the graveyard. Okay. And <laughs> the other one, like the other like Normal Summon starter thing, is Moye, his girlfriend. I don't know how the lore works, but they're a pair. Maybe they're twins. Uh, if this card's normal or special summon, you can reveal a Sword Soul or Worm in your hand instead of banishing one from the graveyard to, again, get a level 4 tuner. Like, this one's just better. Uh, while the token's on the field, your Synchro locked. If this card is sent to the graveyard, draw a card. To oh, this one's if you significantly out. better than the other one. Yeah. It's just like, why this one's the oh, draw a card. <laughs> so, uh, obviously... It looks like you just got like level 8 synchros in a can, and you do, and of course they have a level 8 synchro named Chi Xiao, who's a non-tuner worm and a tuner, and if you're thinking Yang Zing, so did I, but unfortunately Tenny stuff is just more sticky. Yang Zing still has that whole timing as problem. That said, Deng Long is legal in Master Duel, and I've never had Sword Soul cards in Deng Long at the same time, so that's kind of tasty. Uh, if this guy's synchro summoned, you can add to your hand or banish a Sword Soul card from your deck. And as a quick effect, it banishes a Sword Soul card or Worm you control, or sorry, from your hand or in your graveyard. So just banishing a, one of the guys from your graveyard that you just synchroed off to target one other effect on the field and negate its effects until the end of the turn. This is just Savage Dragons, just like a negate. Okay. Yeah, so he's, he's when you synchro summon, he adds a guy from your deck to your hand, a card, so you can get the spell, and then you can banish the ones from your graveyard. Uh, the, and then you drew a card as well because you yes, clearly used the uh, the blue one. <laughs> the blue one. The much oh, I'm gonna be using the colors instead of the names again because that names yes. too. Okay. The much scarier level ten synchro. This thing is horrifying. For each Wait, banished it's card, ten, not twelve. 
Yes. Uh, okay. It starts at double 3k, and for each banished card, it gains 100 attack and defense, and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense. So the simple act of, like, if you've got Gamma on the field or something, and you bring back Orochi, cool, make this thing, like, there's your level 10 Synchro, I have done that I can't tell you how many times in my life, but the simple act of summoning that Orochi banished 8 cards, so that's a 1600 difference. Uh, he's only 38, but they're also all losing 8, so even if their monster was 4,500, this guy would beat it up. He's effective 4,600. Uh, if this card would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish a card from your graveyard instead. Also kind of dumb. That's another uh, attack and defense hey, boost. That card was not... Ins that effect was not insane on Thunder Dragon Colossus at all, was it? <laughs> and if a card is banished, except during the damage step... You can banish one card each from your opponent's field and their graveyard. Yeah. Including bringing back that same Orochi. So <laughs> bringing back Orochi will DD Krill them and banish a card off their board on your opponent's turn. Wow. So how are you summoning this thing? Because obviously you, you get the monster and then you get the token. That's yeah. uh, eight. So there is a level six Sword Soul monster named Long Yong. This one's an ultra rare in real life and a rare in Master Duel, so that's kind of nice of them. He says, discard another Soul Soul card or Worm Monster to special one from your hand, then you get your level 4 to uh, tuner token. And while that token's in a monster zone, you are synchro locked from your extra deck. And uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard of synchro material, inflict 1200 damage to your opponent. Oh, I see why this is so popular in the TCG and probably in Ultra Rare. You've got to consider the end of match procedure <laughs> applicability for it, because it's like, oh, I could snipe you for 1200. Yeah, and then there is Emergence, which I did not see yet. Ah, super rare. Sword Soul Emergence. Add one Sword Soul monster from your deck to your hand. Or if you control a Synchro monster, you can add a Worm instead. Virtual World loves this card a lot. Half the Virtual World monsters happen to be Worms. And this is why I was talking about with um, Lao Lao going to two and stuff, because it was a level six tuner monster. Um, Sword Soul Emergence just searching for like that Long Yuan guy and discarding a worm from your hand like one of the level 3 virtual world guys like GG to just special summon itself and just going crazy especially since the, you're trying to make level 6 and uh, 9 synchros anyway um, if you control a synchro monster you can add any worm instead as it mentions so you can just search for like virtual world monsters if this card is banished you can target one Sword Soul monster or worm you control, increase or decrease its level by one until the end of the turn. That's interesting because uh, that alone on the level fours would not let you summon the, the pen synchro. And it doesn't do anything for the uh, level six. It does open things like level seven synchro options though. Ah, I see, that's the strength for it. Because you're just synchro locked, you're not locked to the archetype. Correct. So you could still you're go just... Black Rose Dragon or there you go. Correct. something else. Okay. Another thing that's absolutely worth bringing up is that of all the cards from the Grand Creator set, uh, which is where these punk things are from, well, not him, that's a Gemini's stupid click, this guy, uh, this punk archetype, which is by all rights a very cool little archetype, it does also contain two different engines, and in my opinion the more powerful and impactful one is a rare and a common. So, okay. this card is nuts. This card is super cool. It is a level 3 Psychic Tuner, and anyone who's played this game long enough will know that E-Telly can go grab this thing. And it Emergency says, Teleport. Yep. Yeah. You can pay 600 life points to add a Punk Trap from your deck to your hand, and then a bunch of sentences that don't matter. Uh, when you activate a Punk card or effect that targets a card your opponent controls, you can target a face that monster your opponent controls. Its attack gets cut in half until the end of the turn. Cool. Don't care. Oh, but you can't do that during a damage step. No. <laughs> but uh, all I care about is like e-tellying that thing out and paying 600 to search for a trap and then I have a level 3 tuner that I'm going to do something horrible with make Helga Fibrax maybe um, but this is the yeah. trap you get which just says target one effect monster your opponent controls and negate it then a bunch of other stuff that doesn't matter if you control a punk monster you gain life equal to that monster's attack don't care this is just infinite impermanence you, you don't even need to control a punk monster in order to negate. Yes. That is so it's, strong. This is just a trap that just says negate a monster effect. And again, you can e-telly out for that spider girl, pay 600 to search for that trap, and just set it. It's just an extra negate on your board. Hmm. Okay, that seems 
Seems pretty good. I guess you're playing that again in Virtual World, where you're already playing Italies in that theme. I mean, I play it in just a deck that's a pile of nonsense, like with Magician Souls and stuff. I'm happy to just Italy for that card, summon a monster, make five racks, and see how far I can take five racks. And like, yeah, I'm... destroy Phoenix Enforcer, Anaconda, Scythe, Artifact Scythe, lock them out of their extra deck with an extra negate because of the trap. Like, I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> Yeah, because TCG, I think um, I saw on social media, moved towards 60 card decks. And it wasn't they weren't playing that grass looks greener. It's just because you had you played so many engines that were so ridiculous. Yes, absolutely. And that is an example of one of those ridiculous engines. Uh, another thing that the punk deck has, uh, before I get back into the Despia stuff, is Xeomin and Foxy Tune. Uh, so Foxy Tune here is a deceptively useful card outside of punk decks, again. Uh, once per turn, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, gain life points equal to that's attack. Not really a relevant effect. But you can each use each of the following effects once per turn. You can tribute a punk monster to special summon this guy from your hand, or you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, and another card from your hand to the graveyard, but not as a cost, to special summon a punk from your deck that isn't a level 8. So he can't go get himself. But this is effectively discard... Uh, if you have Foxy Tune and another card in your hand, you can discard both to special summon a punk monster from your deck. And that could be the, the spider and get the traps, but not really super good to do. You can, however, get Xeomin, who pays 600 to search for a punk monster. And then that can get, like, the spider girl, who you can summon, pay 600 more to get your trap, make Halka Fibrax, or Gossip Shadow, or any rank 3, doesn't matter. You can go from there. Xeomin and Foxy Tune. Xeomin can search for Foxy Tune, who can then, again, special. Uh, what is it? Uh, you can tribute it yes, to summon it from Tribute your hand. one punk monster, the Xeomin, to special summon the Foxy Tune from your hand as a non tuner. Okay. So it, there are gross things you can do with the punk engine, including making five racks without even normal summoning, which is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's not a ridiculous Yu-Gi-Oh card uh, <laughs> at all, especially when you're doing it off without use, committing your normal summon. Mm. Actually, I'm not going to lie, looking at all this and the way you talk about it, it sounds a little bit intimidating to step into the game now, because it almost feels like the complexity of turns have just ramped up to 11. As I, as I mentioned at building. the start, like, all these cards, this is still half of Burst of Destiny. There's an entire other tier one meta deck called Fluanderies that was also in that set that we didn't get. Like, they, they picked a time period to release Master Rule where the game just didn't do anything. Every deck was just like my one thing. OTK, FTK, or Stun You with Floodgates. These are actually like decks that interact with the cards within your own deck and like play and interact with your opponent and stuff. Like, there's actual Yu-Gi-Oh to play here. Which is great. Anytime that we're actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh uh, is better than just summon a herald of ultimateness mm. okay you can have, i'm gonna have six negates to your six cards yeah i'm gonna be real with you herald is useless against the sword soul deck they will just play until you run out of fairies even through evas yeah even through evas <laughs> yeah all right so you're gonna be teaching me this deck uh probably off stream uh then i'll eventually figure out uh figure it all out and then put together a deck profile for the youtube channel but i'm excited to see that because i've got a stack of gems i've been sitting on yeah. Looking for something new to put them in. And, like, there's things like Despian Comedy finally have, like, the Despia deck. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a Despia card you control, you can discard this card to negate it. That's nice. Much more relevant. If this is in your graveyard, tribute a fusion monster to special summon this card as a quick effect. I can summon my fusion even while you have skill drain on the board. Activate Comedy and tribute this fusion to bring the Comedy back, and the fusion's effect will resolve. Like, there's... The Despia deck yeah. has its tools now, and the one that I really felt like I was missing was Branded in Red, but also Ad Libitum. This card finally, like, oh my god, my heart. Ad Libitum is the coolest card in the Despia deck. Uh, during your main phase, you can make all monsters on the field gain 100 attack for every star they have until the end of the opponent's turn. And if this card in your hand or field is used as a fusion material, you can target one of your Despia monsters that's level or level 8 or higher fusion monster that's banished or in your graveyard except for ad libitum and special summon it. So this thing oh. 
is super, super good. When you use like branded and red and fuse it off, it just brings back like a fusion monster. Have you got a Dust Pit deck already built uh, no, in your collection? I, I, I didn't have the. Like I said, it's not like I could leave blank spots for the um, branded and reds. So they didn't get added into the game until today. Uh, ah, so we can build the deck right here on the stream. Incredible Ecclesia, the Virtuous. Another. This card is sick beyond sick. This is. Believe it or not, you're going to use this card and I'm not. And then in about two months, the way Master Rule's going, I'm going to use this card and you're not. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is a different archetype? Yes. Or just a, what, a standalone um, card? So um, you of all people probably know that there is an overarching storyline that goes from set to set and then resets every time a green set comes along. Um, this particular green set block is based around a guy named Fallen of Alabaz and a girl named Ecclesia. And this is just the latest incarnation of Ecclesia. You may have seen uh, her as a Dogmatica monster a long time ago. Yes, yes, I do. I was going to say the artwork looks a little bit from... Okay, so, lore aside, if your opponent controls more monsters than you, special summon this card from your hand, so it's a Cyber Dragon. Uh, you can only special summon this once per turn this way. You can only use each of the following effects of the Incredible Ecclesia, the Virtuous, once per turn. During your main phase, quick effect, you tribute this card, special summon one sword, soul, or fallen of Albaz from your hand or deck. During the end phase, if a fusion monster is sent for the, to the graveyard this turn, add this card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh my god, this is so disgusting. So essentially you can special summon this, get the sword soul guy from your deck, the blue one, mm -hmm. uh, summon a tuner, get your level 8 synchro, draw a card, without committing a normal summon. There you go. Or in fact, yeah, you could, yeah, because you're synchro locked, so you have to make the level 8. And then once you've got that off the field, you can then do uh, normal summon the other one. Uh, synchro up another level eight. Then you've got access to. Are you synchro locked for the whole turn or just, uh, just while, while you control, control the token? token? Oh, so you can go eight eight. Uh, use the second eight to destroy something. Oh, you can use any synchro monster. Then overlay them into a rank eight, right? I believe so. All right. I don't know how the sword soul deck works at all. So there's probably some people sat in chat just like. Rolling their eyes so loud that their neighbors can hear. But right now, I'm just trying to map it out in my head. But this card is disgustingly good. Yeah. Although it's a spellcaster, so it's probably not that easy to search for, right? It's just a card that you play three copies of in your deck. Believe it or not, it's one of the most searchable cards ever printed in Yu Gi Oh! Oh, is that because of uh, it's a small world or something like that? Uh, well, th there's that. But also, um, technically, small world just gives you six to nine copies of every monster in Yu Gi Oh! But uh, Ecclesia has the magic string of text in it, Fallen of Albaz. There are 14 different cards in the game that say search your deck for Fallen of Albaz or a card that mentions it. Oh! And she happens to mention it. Just That's just how it works. So you're just going to deal with that. But um, there is, as you saw, like special summon one Sword Soul monster or Fallen of Albaz. You are going to be playing her in Sword Soul. Absolutely, there's no excuse to not play this card in Sword Soul. Nuts. I am going to be playing it because in the end phase, if a fusion monster is sent to the graveyard, it adds her back to my hand. And yep. uh, while I won't be playing Fallen of Albaz in my deck right now, the next batch of updates for the deck adds three different fusion monsters that all support Fallen of Albaz. And you start playing three copies of Fallen of Albaz and a copy of her and search for her like crazy, and she's just a free discard every single turn of the duel in that deck. Yeah, that seems pretty legitimate, I'm not gonna lie. Also, if you're if anybody's an aspiring game designer in the channel, uh, the way Yu-Gi-Oh writes his cards shouldn't be how you design games, because it's actually something really interesting. A lot of these cards say more about what the card can't, what you're not allowed to do with the card, than what the card actually does. And that's something you want to avoid because it's so unbelievably complicated uh, when you're trying to map out how your combos and turns are going to work. I mean, this is why I love Master because it won't let me do a move that's illegal. But like, if you're just playing on the table, I can. it's so easy just to guess. Oh, okay, that's a pretty amazing pack. Nice, I got my Phoenix Enforcer and my two Masquerades. <laughs> okay, right, so we can, we can save the rest of the gems for the next selection pack. <laughs> well, I, I still need a Luber and stuff, but yes. That was really nice. <laughs> well, we could just uh, we could just go with that. All right, no, no, no. Let's build this. Let's build this deck on live. 
Uh, obviously, you can change it and stuff while we're off, but... Uh, localization. Uh, again, it comes from a time where I can't, I can't talk about it, but... Yeah, localization is fun. Ah, there's my Quiritus. Hey, and my King of the Sky for... Oh, I got a Royal Rare. Hello. A Royal Rare Polar Bear. I got the Royal Rare Polar Bear. Is it actually playable, or is that just like a garbage card? Uh, it's a starter card for a garbage deck. Oh, okay, so, yeah, it is, it is. I shouldn't be offensive to any of the cards, but, like, guys, let's be honest, Ooh, uh, you come is, here to look at... This was really yeah, nice to get. Um, there is, as anyone can imagine, um, debate about what two Destiny heroes you dump with your Fusion Destiny that I knew I pulled. Uh, like, when you play Fusion Destiny, you have to dump two Destiny hero monsters to summon your... Um, Phoenix Enforcer, Phoenix right? Phoenix Enforcer, yeah. He's just a fusion sum of like two Destiny heroes. Uh, there are all sorts of people. The, the almost unanimous consent, really, is that you send this guy because next turn he draws two, and Dasher because Dasher, it lets right. you summon the guy from your hand, who it does not look like I pulled this time. That's fine. Um, did they put Dasher in this set? Uh, He's like a common, no. I think, anyway, right? No. Yeah, uh, probably. Um, I... Plasma is the other one. People are like, Plasma is really good to draw, to be fair. Yeah, Plasma is one of those cards. When it first came out, it was absolutely insane. I was working in a toy shop. That's how long ago it was. I must have been about 16. And Plasma was by far one of the most insane tins that were out that year. I think Cyber Dragon came out at the same time. I can't remember that was a Cyber Dragon. It's really close. Tin. Plasma was in a tin, and Cyber Dragon was in Cybernetic Revolution, and I believe that the tins were the 2005 tins, so... Yeah, it, uh, and... Like Xerian Universe and stuff. A skill drain uh, that you could summon off of scapegoats was so good in the Dark Arm Dragon format, because essentially, if your opponent just went off, you could summon the Plasma, eat that guy, and they couldn't follow up OTK you. Mm. Uh, it was just such a good card. And then it's kind of a case, it got to the point where it's like, I could give up these three monsters and probably summon access code tool, but why would I ever consider Plasma? <laughs> printed Banquet of Millions after trying to murder that FTK. Oh. Sorry. I just I No 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 no. It's it's <laughs> I'm not there there are, there's definitely rooms for improvement, but overall I do want to give props to the design team for this update because the game it was getting a little bit dry to uh to play. And they've definitely done a good job. And despite some things that could definitely be improved, like not reprinting Banquet of Millions, um, this is going to be a really exciting format. In fact, there's probably enough uh, here to keep us entertained for a couple of months, actually, uh, depending on how fast the format gets solved. Because you've got to remember that the Master Duel format isn't a mirror of the TCG or the OCG. There are decks that can be exclusive to Master Duel uh, because of some of the world premieres that are out. Uh, alongside the OCG Forbidden Unlimited list that weren't mm. in the OCG. I uh, like that Wing Dragon Ara deck, the uh, God Hand Poker deck that I had. <laughs> Royal Flush Poker. Like that, you can't play that in either the TCG or the OCG. Uh, so there's always those kinds of things that you can find. Ah, 2007 tins. Thank you, Deepla, for the clarification. Yes, because Exarian causes all the trouble with was it legal for goats format? <laughs> and uh, no, it wasn't. Tell your friends. But um, my, uh, my choices for. Phoenix Enforcer, in a vacuum, if you're playing a deck that can accommodate this, great, not every deck can, is uh, Destiny Hero Malicious and Denier here. I think this is the card that's, like, this card is stupid. Um, if it's normal or special summon, you take a Destiny Hero monster from your deck, graveyard, or that's banished, and put it on top of your deck. And then, um... if you have a Destiny Hero monster on your field or in your graveyard other than Denier, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Um, you put the malicious back on top of the deck so that you could use the one that's now in the yes. to get the malicious. Yes, to say nothing of the fact that, like, just <laughs> when you dump this guy in malicious to make Phoenix Enforcer, you can banish malicious for second malicious and bring back this guy and put the first malicious back in the deck, and you can make Cross Crusader to tribute malicious and search your deck for a hero card and search your deck for evil hero adjusted gold who can discard you from your hand to the graveyard to add dark fusion and then you banish malicious to get another malicious and your denier and malicious can uh link into the link i can't remember his name right now he's a link three hero monster 
I think he's called like Extra Hero Dread Decimator. But he's got a bunch of attack points. He boosts everyone's attack points. And you still have your Phoenix Enforcer. And then you have a Malicious and an Adust of Gold in your graveyard to banish with Dark Fusion and summon Malicious Bane. And Malicious Bane can't be destroyed by card effects. And once per turn, Rick is your opponent's board. And that is a lot more than just a Phoenix Enforcer to say nothing of the fact that Phoenix Enforcer says destroy both one card you control and one card on the field, and you can pick your malicious Bane, which will live, and their card will still die. And that means Phoenix Enforcer no longer is trading one for ones, it's just plus one-ing every single turn. And all of this is legal under the restrictions of Fusion Destiny, which locks you into Darks Warrior Fusion. It Warrior it summons you into the Dark the Monsters, time, right? and every single thing I just said was a Dark. Okay, we are in business. This is gonna be a juicy <laughs> format, lads. And lasses. We want to be inclusive here. <laughs> oh my god, the disgusting things that we could do is so exciting. Sword Soul will probably be the deck that I'm gonna investigate, but I'm not gonna lie, you've tickled my interest with the hero deck now. I've not even, like, you've, we've got the Cyber Dark cards, and I'm just like, but there's all this other stuff that sounds really good. Why would I play Cyber Dragon right uh, so yeah, alright, uh, I guess you're gonna throw together your Despia deck. I'm gonna go for it. Alright, are we gonna do some live games while we're on the stream tonight? Uh, we'll see how I feel after I'm done putting this together, because I still have to like... I've got some super rare points and one ultra rare, great. Um, at the very least, I'll uh, hop into the pool and see if I can find someone playing Sword Soul or something for you. Uh, okay. Ash Blossom. I'm just going to do this really quickly and hope that I remember everything I care about. <sighs> ah, Maxi. Yeah, we are actually going to do a video for the YouTube channel, which is going to go over a dive into hand traps. Uh, their uses and when and when you shouldn't be including different ones in your deck. Uh, in actual fact, that was inspired by a commenter uh, who was very adamant that Max C should be the first free card you put into every Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And I very much disagree. I feel like there's a part where Max, Max C is a very good card, but if you can't get its peak, I'm always dubious about whether or not I want to include it over the deck over something that's a little bit more effective. But we'll cover all that and uh, show you a real life example uh, when we get to doing the, uh, the hand trap feature uh, uh, a little later. It's particularly interesting later. I was able to pull Destroy Phoenix Enforcer in two Masquerades, but not a single one of those. Oh no, what will you, ever will you do with those <laughs> 1,623 rare crystals? <laughs> I guess we I guess we just have to end the stream. Oh no. Uh, that guy's uh, pretty see. good. And what you, guys, what you guys are seeing here, actually, which is uh, credit to basically how you should build your collection, is the hand traps were the very first things that were crafted. Uh, because they get played across multiple decks. So a lot a lot of these ultra rare gems, uh, crystals, that Dan would need, they're, they're, they're essentially going to be sunk into every deck that he's building. So they're very good if you want to have a long collection, uh, if you want to build multiple decks. If you are just building the one deck on a new account, like I do when I uh, deck features, uh, then, then it's less relevant. You want to craft the theme cards for it first. But you generally having a collection of things like Ash Blossom, I would actually go out on a limb and argue that Ash Blossom is one of the strongest Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever printed in the entire game. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, it's Ash Blossom? I think Ash Blossom is... Uh, my comments on Ash Blossom are very controversial. <laughs> I, I think it's an absolutely insane card. And it's so versatile. It's it's one of the best cards. It, you may not say that like it's the best for certain in certain situations but i think in terms of a design it was it's such a fantastic card you can mass craft which is convenient oh yeah we can uh, demonstrate the batch craft uh feature yeah uh also the, it's um starving venom that's his name and then it's anima definitely need relinquish to anima is the Dark Charmer out? I don't believe he is. Ooh. No. Black Belt not. Sam. Ash is a one-off if you use it. I think it depends. It's just a little bit more useful in Master Duel because Max your opponents C. are probably playing three copies of Max C and it gives yeah. you... Um, that enables you to 
resolve your ash on the first turn when you draw it. So it's a little bit extra here. Oh, this, well, while Dan's working on a deck, obviously, uh, you can, you can ignore me. It's yeah, it's just so strong because every it's the things that it covers is like what thing that every deck wants to do. It does. There's only a handful of matchups where it's absolutely garbage. I got four extra deck slots, and I'm trying to like see how far I can push them, basically. Because hmm. like all the important ones that are out are here. Obviously, there's more coming. <laughs> like Predator uh, Plant, Predator Plant, Triff. Oh, there's a good card I don't have. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Fusion Destiny. You probably don't want to forget that. Oh, uh, semi limited. That's okay. I only wanted to play two anyway. Uh. uh. Uh, Edgent Sabres? No, you wouldn't play that in this deck, would you? No, no, no. Uh, so, you play the Edgent Chain because if he goes from the hand, uh, if he's used as a material for a fusion summon, he searches for a Fright for spell card, and you can grab Patchwork, and Patchwork adds an Edgent Monster and a Polymerization. So, I can I play Patchwork to get yeah. Edgent Chain and Poly, play Poly on the Edgent Chain and a Despia Monster to summon this card, using a Despia and Light or Dark, and then the Edgent Chain just gets me another Fright for Patchwork. Because Yu-Gi-Oh is a fun game for children. <laughs> uh, well, it definitely gets your reading comprehension up, yep. that's for sure. Yeah, you need college reading level to understand how Snow works, the Dark World monster. Speaking of oh. which, you probably should play <laughs> Snow, huh? Oh, actually, oh no, we don't have, I was about to say, I should probably start my fusion deck with Token Collector, too. Uh, there is no side decks, so uh, this is... Craft these if you don't have them, because if I'm correct and Sword Soul is going to take off, this is the card that beats the Sword Soul deck. Oh, it stops them, means they're not allowed to summon tokens. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got 2,000 defense, so yeah, we'll see 1,800. <laughs> Who would have guessed Aquabador was still good against Seven Colored Fish? It's also, he comes back from the graveyard over and over as well. Like, they, they he doesn't just stop them the one turn he comes down. Even if they kill him, he comes back in the next turn and the next turn and the next turn and just, like, screw you and your tokens. Oh. Wait, so that card literally just makes Sword Soul unplayable? If they get to it. If a token is special summon, you can summon this guy from your hand or graveyard. And then when he's summoned, destroy as many tokens on the field as possible. And then neither player can summon tokens. Okay, so Called by the Grave is going to be definite. Not it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe yeah, even DD Crow. Not just DD Crow to get them out of the. Yeah, exactly. How prevalent this is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I need the uh, extra hero guy and the Bane. So I need the extra hero. This card, again, going to be nuts. Okay, I, apparently extra doesn't work. Extra hero? Is it spelled like the hyphen? No? Okay. Is it extra, as in EX? It's just Dread Decimator, but... It's oh, yeah, Decimator. this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This but guy. there's also Cross Crusader. Uh, yeah, this fella. And then... Bane. Yeah. That sounds ominous. And then Dark Fusion, is it called? Or is it... It's the one with the hand. This guy, Dark Calling. Dark Calling, yeah. And then the guy that just says, discard me to search for Dark Calling, which is this guy. There we go. And that's still only 14. Man, you got a lot of space when you don't have to play Guardian Chimera. Uh, Guardian Chimera Keeper. is the next update. That's Once Guardian Chimera comes out, there's, you should not be playing any deck except for this one. But... Um, Oh, so you're telling me my Sword Souls is not a long-term investment? Uh, it depends. Um, Guardian Chimera is just... It, it's a fusion monster that uses two monsters from the field and one monster from my hand. Or two monsters from my hand, one monster from the field. And this branded in red card says, like, get a guy from the graveyard to my hand and then fusion summon. So I have one in hand and two from the field. Guardian Chimera on summon draws a card for every material used from the hand and pops a card for every material used from the field. So it's a nice way to just like effectively draw two and pop t your opponent's board and get like oh. a 3300 monster. Like it's gross. I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah, Earth Golem's a great one. Thank you, Ness. 
It's another uh, just a super poly target. Shaboom. Although I don't play Cybers monsters. Like taking their link monster is nice, but I don't have a Cybers to eat. Uh what about World Legacy Elmer Duke? That's a good one. The Guard Dragon Elmer Duke. He's gotta be here. Okay, well just Elmer Duke. That guy. World Chalice Guard Dragon. He's just a fusion of three Link monsters. You super probably three other Link monsters, they're gonna feel it. Oh god, that would be pretty horrible. Uh, to go through the whole <laughs> Agnista combo. Oh, it's three Link monsters. No, you can get around it if you could Kachiri. Yeah, as uh, long as you're just using yeah. Splash Mage and Update Jammer, you never hit a third one, you're fine. But, God forbid, you, uh... Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It can get bad Things really quickly. Uh, this one's, like, this is just two Dark Monsters. Works really nice. Or two monsters of the same type, or same attribute, but different types. Uh, a Destiny Hero Monster and a Dark Effect Monster. This lets your Super Poly eat their Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Right, yeah, you're not playing uh, Artifact Scythe in this deck at all, right? No, um, that's a different type of deck where you use Artifact Dagda, I believe his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's just two monsters, and then if another card or effect is activated, you set the Scythe from your deck, and then Dagda and somebody turns into your Anaconda to get you the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, so that on your opponent's turn, the Phoenix Enforcer can pop the Scythe that was set from the deck. This deck is not Run. trying to combo in that way, so to speak. I'm not really pushing for that. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm not at any point going to make Dagda. <laughs> so, uh, batch generate cards not owned. You're missing 36 super rare crystals. And 52 ultra rare ones. It only generated the branded and reds. Okay. <laughs> so I, I needed, it was 36 and 32. I, I like how I did just come up with, you are too poor. <laughs> just on the screen. Well, I mean, like, oh. I, I should have just like, dismantle all extra cards should give me some of it. Okay. I'm, I'm six shy on the supers. That's that's how we're going to do this. Okay. So let's find some super rares that will never see the light of day. That you conveniently have 12 of because that's just how the sets are made. First of the dragon is two normal monsters unaffected by everything, right? Oh, you're busy. Um, yeah, so first of the dragons is just two normal monsters, so you could use to token. I guess you can't play first of the dragons in Sword Souls. I could be wrong because you get locked to synchro summons, and first of the dragons is a fusion monster. Uh, yeah, Snare, he is working on that. The problem with Dan is he's looking for a complete collection. Uh, oh, against Sword Soul. Oh, yeah, then... Yeah, actually, that seems pretty cool. You could play First of the Dragon against Sword Soul. I guess it depends on how much you're seeing it on the ladder in one format. It's going to be a bit of a... a bit of a tough call, uh, unless you can see... Unless you've really got a lot of room to flex uh, your extra deck, because then every time that you're not playing Sword Soul, you're losing that slot, essentially. But in terms of just Dan dismantling stuff, he's looking to get free copies of every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh! So dismantling this kind of stuff sets him back from that goal. Uh, so that's, what, that's why using the excess feature first is kind of, the, kind of the play. I, on the other hand, have no such ambition and have absolutely no regard to just destroying... Look at this shit with the boats! What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> oh, you just want three copies of uh, I've pulled that thing. I've got I've pulled so many copies of Sea Monster of Theseus that I have two glossies and a royal one. Oh, this I remember this card. This card was That was my attempt to pull Despian Queritus and failing, only to pull it in one try today. Oh my goodness, same with this polar bear. Okay, well I don't need that one. Oh no. <sighs> No, but I'm really excited to see this deck in action. Um, this should be a good last. Yeah, you're gonna watch me. <laughs> so hard. 
Deepplay, if I could give you anything for that comment, I absolutely would. If I could give you channel points, <laughs> that was. You I could gift him a subscription to the channel. <laughs> Can I do that? How, how yeah, do I do that? A, at the bottom right of the stream itself, there's a little purple button that says gift a sub, and then you can check off the specific user and type in Depla00. Zero zero. Uh, okay, so I can only have the option to subscribe because it's not my channel, or I can gift a sub and I have to pay for it. Mm. Oh, if I didn't have to pay for it, I'd give you one, man. That's uh, <laughs> quite honestly, if you're looking for top level top level gentleman style of intellect that kind of comment is the thing that you need to bring when you come to this channel uh to answer your question black belt sam it is the royal rare one obviously okay you're still eight ultra rare crystals short no no how many i have left when i'm done oh and every single thing was non-foil one in ten my ass but whatever bang Oh, you've unlocked a free pool on a pack that you... A couple, actually. Now, what do you go ahead and pull the duplicate ultra that you needed? A decision was made to use Utopia Ray V over just Utopia for that animation. I don't even understand what it does. Like, when it pops up. It, it gets me excited, but I don't know what it means for the pack. Does it mean that I've got one card got upgraded or something? I don't think they do a good job communicating. Like um, in Legends of Rune Terror, the League of Legends card game, when a card upgrades, you you see it. You see it go from uh, epic to legendary, and it's kind of a big thing. But I have no idea what that Utopian monster does at all. Is it negating my pool? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be quite. That would be through. quite hilarious, right? You got to open the pack. And... Oh, yeah. yeah can you imagine good. you open a pack and like a herald of perfection shows up instead, and your super just disappears? <laughs> just takes the super rare away from you. Hey, my first oh. arrival cybers. <laughs> yeah, just, that's great. I, if you I just refused, got that yesterday. Yeah, I refused to craft one out of principle. I was like, I am not spending ultra rare points so that I can sometimes go first. I'm just not gonna do it. And the game gave me one, and it wasn't even in the set I was opening. <laughs> and it was out of a free pack. Yep. Oh, for goodness. And then natural selection. Oh, isn't that just me all over? I got it because I crafted the anaconda. Nice. All these have had at least a gold night line, which is pretty good. Thing. Hey, that's a card that you can play in the deck, right? It requires three dark monsters on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, in a Despia format, that feels pretty good with Super Volley. It's not bad at all, yeah. Alrighty. Well, I have done like all I can do except for making the deck fancier. So let's make the deck fancier and continue procrastinating, actually dueling with it. Uh, deck box for Despia. Dark one. The Monarch one. Oh, there's a Fusion one. Protector. Gonna use the Fire ones because they're badass. Dual Field. Let's use the Danger one because I've never used it before. Uh, which I guess is that one. Field parts. Yep. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> These ones. <laughs> the the Danger ones, ones yeah. <laughs> the Flower Guardian one. The, the Danger one, why not? Yeah. Three main cards. The ones that'll make me happy when I see them. Well, branded in red, <laughs> a luber, and probably patchwork. That's pretty three main cardy. So when you set your three main card to your deck, that's when it comes up uh, when you draw it, it sort of flashes across the screen, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Actually, what are your thoughts, uh, just while you're queuing up, on the increase to diamond rank? Do you think that's going to increase the overall quality of play on the ladder? I do. Um, I think that fewer players are going to make it to Platinum and then get kicked back down to Gold because Platinum is not going to be as cutthroat. Yeah. A lot of the more cutthroat players will be in Diamond now. It'll, it'll make Platinum be what Gold used to be up to a certain point. Um, obviously not quite as bad as Gold was, but there is, uh, 
just a lot of freedom to it. I've also noticed that when you're in gold five, you can't get paired against someone who's gold one anymore. You only get paired against other people who are also gold five. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really interesting because, I, like, I just get a feeling for the majority of the players, you you know, you're just basically going to move up one rank tier, and that's basically the only changes of adding a new, uh, a new ladder tier essentially is going to do. All right, so this is going to be a bit of a walkthrough for anybody who's not familiar with Despia. It's uh, going to be you'll get awkward around? because I learned the deck after Guardian Chimera was out, but I'm going to try. Oh, don't worry, we'll learn together, and it doesn't matter if you... Uh, we can we can all laugh about it together. <laughs> oh gosh, and I'm on a clock, what am I doing? Oh, good. <laughs> that hand looks kind of playable. I've just, I've opened one of my polys and stuff already, which is ridiculous, but... Alright, well, let's go for it. Oh my god, it feels like casting a YCS all over again. So, we're going to start with Polymerization. I wonder what Dan will go for. Uh, no, I'm going to go for this because it's blind and this card's silly and just nuts in general. That's great, Snare, because I would come up against... Uh, here's something whenever I was climbing. Whenever I came up against a deck that I, and I knew the deck was terrible and I wasn't going to read the cards, I just concede the game because I didn't want to waste the time reading everything to play the game properly. It was just faster to go, yeah, okay, I'll lose that game. <laughs> so not being able to get demoted uh, definitely benefits my toxic mindset when it I comes to a best of win format. I can't resolve, so that's fun. I'm going to activate this one, and the other one in my hand cannot be played because I don't have another polymerization in my deck. Luber, and I search for spell cards. Unless you live in Europe, in which case I search for nothing. Oh, is this card a uh, Shonen Jump promo? No, it's uh, in Europe they accidentally printed it to say add one Despia spell or trap from your deck to your hand and there's no such thing. Womp womp. Oh, sucks to be in... Wait, that's exactly where I am. <laughs> <gasps> M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. Wait, I just realized which, that this affects me. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, I'm gonna go for it just because I have another one to get off Brandon in red anyway. I'm just gonna, just because it's funny and I'm in gold. These viewers, some of these guys have never seen gold, Dan. You have to treat this with some reverence and <laughs> and show them exactly how they're going to climb all the way up to the top tiers, because that's what this podcast... It's actually not. We're here to have a lot of fun. I'm very much, hey, getting to the top of the ranks is the most important thing. Dan is more about the educational side of it. All right. Okay, so this opponent is, now pays 1,200 life This is bloodletting board. This thing says they have to pay 600 life to play cards, and I've got two of them. So he can play five cards. Well, that's, that'd be 1,600. I guess he can play, like... Seven. First card, Regeki. <laughs> that would suck for me. Every time he plays a card, he's going to lose 1,200 life points. So there goes some of it. Uh, but now he takes no damage for the rest of his turn. You know, oh, the counterplay! <laughs> the one day of peace. Shutting down Dan's Despia Dragon. Oh, it's not damage. Oh, there's the Regeki I was talking about. I'm so good at this game, honestly. It's insane. <laughs> My hand reading abilities go straight through this screen into yours. The the sickest thing about that, right, is that you can just get the jester back, isn't it? Uh, and the dragons, actually. Oh, oh, oh ac actually. Actually, just like as a throw-in. Oh, yeah, and the dragons. <laughs> when this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field if your opponent controls an extra deck card. Oh, your opponent's playing stun. Oh, of course it is. We're in gold. Mm, this is a light. Despian Quiridus, right? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not about to try something dumber than I'm doing. Because what I'm doing is already pretty dumb. It's not dumb. We're <laughs> just learning a new strategy that didn't work as well as the, the optimal play. <laughs> we're not going to have that negativity and that mindset while we're here.
And this is Despia Quarter, which has the ability to, once per turn, reduce the attack monsters on the field to zero. Ooh. That's a snazzy animation. Change the attack of all monsters on the field to zero until the end of the turn, except the level eight or higher fusions. And if this card in summon is controlled, leaves the field because of your opponent, you can add to your hand or special summon an Albaz or a Despia monster from your deck. And there's a Noticeably, turn. Albaz isn't even in your deck. Yeah. And then because I used that guy as a fusion material again, now that it's my opponent's turn, because this guy's once per turn, he searches for monsters. Oh, <laughs> more filth. Mm. Hey, look, a Luger. Ready for this torrential tribute? It's all right, you can Ash Blossom him. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe this is where Ash Blossom not. Yeah, if you're playing that many trap cards, you're definitely playing, uh... You're definitely playing stun, I would guess. Because it is Eldlick, we'd have definitely seen... Oh, okay. Well, that... that's... there you go, Ash Blossom, that's a pretty good card. I'm, I'm gonna Ash only because there's nothing else in his deck I can use Ash on, probably. But oh, because this would be like your one summon for the turn, right? Well, I'm getting a spell, <laughs> so... Oh. oh yeah, one day apiece until the opponent end of the opponent's next turn. You. Oh, so it's gonna be yeah, it's it's gonna be a burn deck probably then. Wait, no, you won't play one day apiece in a burn deck. You play it in something like Exodia. Set called by the grave. He didn't solve me. How nice of him. Thank you, my friend. Oh, because of the ti the timing stuttering, uh, mm. you figured it out, right? There's a skill drain, yeah. But it, it didn't ask if he wanted to change skill drain to my effect. It asked if he had a response to my summon before the trigger effect, so he's got a counter trap set. Uh, Don't think I can do anything with that. <coughs> so. Yeah, I was going to say, that just makes your gesture zero. I can't smack him because of one day of peace, but uh, I can make an well, Anaconda just... for DPE, but I don't want to. He can't because of skill drain. Oh yeah, that'd be really dumb. <laughs> that 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 would be bad. What I need is um, comedy. Is how you beat skill drain. Comedy tributes the guy right off the board. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Well, if, it's, if it is Exodia, he's not doing a great job. He just summoned Max C. Yeah, for the Torrential That's the Torrential Tribute you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let it happen, I suppose. And then get my 3,000 attack Dramaturge. Doesn't have an effect as a skill drain, but it's still 3,000. Blue Eyes White Dragon is a pretty, is still a good card. Well, the thing is that Dramaturge, when it's used as a fusion material, brings itself back from the graveyard as well. Oh, uh, okay. And it has a negate. If Skill Drain wasn't here, it's just once per turn negate thing, which is pretty crazy sick, so... My god, this deck is so disgusting. You've got so many resources to play through. It'd be nice like, your opponent's literally played multi-monster removal twice in this game, and you still have gas. <laughs> they call me Brick. <laughs> it's an advanced form of Tai Chi. It doesn't do anything, but it stops us from doing as much. Oh, Fusion Destiny. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Sure, sure, okay. Fusion Destiny, not that malicious. Yeah, there's a point. If you had the Celestia uh, Dasher, you wouldn't be able to resolve it. Or it'd be a little bit tricky, depending on... Oh, there you go. Yeah, opponent realizes they are not going to be able to keep the amount of gas that we have, and they promptly pick up their cards. Oh That's my good, god. Man. This Lordy, lordy, this deck is disgusting. Like, this was something that the Attic Mist, the, deck, the reason that I was so adamant that prior to this update was the 
best deck in the format was exactly because of what Dan was doing to that opponent there. The opponent has interaction, 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 and you can just keep going. Absolutely disgusting, and uh, I'm just trying to think about how much time, because I do have work tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure I could see you get to plat tonight if we kept going, <laughs> depending on how you're feeling. I don't think I have it in me to just sit here and grind up four, five ranks of gold, to be honest with you, but... But you do have me to entertain, to make it a little bit more entertaining, so maybe you do. I will give it one more, but I am, like, but branded in red, usually when you flip it, you're fusing, you're adding the guy back from the graveyard to your hand and fusing the two cards off the field. So the guy that you added to your hand searches for a monster for next turn, and the two cards you fuse off the field, one of them comes back, and the Guardian Chimera blows up two of your opponent's cards. So, like... I'm used to that being even more powerful than what you saw, but... Alrighty, I've got a Luber and I've got Ad Libitum, so that's fun. Ash me. I'm not gonna ash no, would you like to ash yourself? <laughs> no, I think I'm good. You have selected no. Mm, do I want Dramaturge? Fusion Sound level later higher, guys. This card just, just looks stupid crazy. How about I just search for it? Like I said, a Luber was in the last update when I first said, like, let's play Despia. But the problem was, when I summoned a Luber, what do I get? And the answer was, nothing. Because there's, like, no fusion spell. So, now I've got one. I could have got the field spell and fused, but I don't have a fusion yet to abuse with this, so. You're also pretty safe, because you've got the Ash Blossom, you've got the fusion. Even if it opens Lightning Storm, you're still pretty okay. So this can't fuse unless I add from the graveyard to the hand first. Oh, what I'm okay. So you... is a Luber dying and then flipping this up to add the Luber and fusing. So you are quite vulnerable right now. Uh, I've got an Ash, but yes. My friend Andy here has a couple of back row. Solid soldier. Those are. Like the infinite impermanence is done if I had to make a read. If I was, if it was impermanence, you would have put it here, which is why I put this here. So he can't pendulum summon and impermanent me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right, so what else would heroes be playing? Well, this um, is MST. <laughs> it, MST? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to go after that, isn't he? Nope, he's going to let me do this. Okay. Thank you. That also tells you a bit more about what your opponent's got they need more to combo and here a really cool thing here is that you can't get mass change with um into dark law because dark law would be pretty difficult for you to handle right now uh, believe it or not a lot of these fusion monsters use the banished cards to do it of course they do <laughs> of course they do <laughs> like while my opponent's figuring himself out uh i'll just get you read this card real quick If this card is in a hand or fails to use a fusion or banished, you can target one of your Despia monsters, uh, level 8 or higher fusion monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, except this card. Special summon. Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. Oh, it, 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 the game played out exactly as you said it would. I have played Yu Gi Oh! before. Once or twice. Once or twice. <laughs> the fact that I'm asking you about how to play Dragon Souls, you probably give the audience a clear <laughs> indication of. Who's more familiar with the current format? Mm, I'll still hold this for one more. Yep, and then we have to activate this. I have another Luber, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, Dramaturge, I'll get off where it is. Let's get comedy. Oh! This? Well, isn't that like the greatest follow-up ever if this doesn't go through? <laughs> is, is Quartus's effect to reduce our attack to zero just... Oh, until the end of this turn. Okay, yeah. Opponent has bottomless trap hole. Yeah. Okay, Andy. Oh wait, you can just make his attack zero.
I could. Could you have not just made the attack zero and then bottom I, I absolutely could have, yes. <laughs> oh, and he got ya. He got ya good. I guess I'm Ooh. this guy. <laughs> Pro Skenium. It just steals should... your opponent's extra deck cards from their graveyard. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool, but uh, I don't actually have the light. I, oh, Quiridus would be the light. Yeah, I don't want to lose my Quiridus, so let's go this guy. And we will use that. We will use that one. Nah. Sorry for adding that. <laughs> Scarecrow is one hell of a drug, apparently. Hmm. I have Libertum, the broken Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, this guy was banished, I kind of want him, so... Uh, Luber's hard once per turn. Yeah. Add Libertum. There we go. You didn't use the effect of Add Libertum? I did. Add Libertum got this guy back. Ah, okay, yeah, sorry, I missed that. I was reading the chat. So you have yep. an okay. for me? You do? Aw, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, relinquish out of us. <laughs> More disrespect. Best comboed with kaijus, because you can actually choose exactly where you put the kaijus. Alright, he's got the mass change, he's forced to use it now. And he does not, or he chooses not to use it. Or he doesn't run the earth. Mask change guy in the extra deck. Yeah, opponent can play two cards. Actually, opponent can play one card. If this attack goes through. Or he doesn't run the earth mask change guy in the extra deck. Yeah, opponent can play two cards. I say opponent can play one card. If this attack goes through. Opponent doesn't have Mirror Force. I get the feeling they would have played it. <laughs> ah, you know what? I've been caught off guard by Mirror Forcing a few times. And it's just because it's one of those things where it does it rarely matters, and there's always that one game where it catches it does matter, and you're like, Yeah, like can't believe I'm losing Mirror Force. I I, I understand, like, the people in the chat mentioning this. I know I could have fused the Quiridus with the Ad Libitum, and then Ad Libitum brings back the Quiridus. I'm, I'm experimenting right now with, like, what I can do because I don't have Guardian Chimera, so I'm trying to see, like, what kind of shenanigans I can pull. And this is a turn you're going to get away with it, right? Yeah. You're not going to get punished as hard. Do I go for Anaconda? No. Yeah, he gets to play one card. If it's okay. not like Regeki or some other interaction for this, he can activate one card. And he's chosen to make a generation next. Get your game on. Uh, no. So, this one elemental hero card that he has to. It has to be 7400 or less attack. <laughs> I mean, he could get something. It's Stratos that can't activate without losing the duel. Uh, I don't think he's allowed to activate it just because he doesn't have five points. Yeah. Yes, who actually plays Mirror Force? Famous last words. Draining Mirror Force is one I've run into quite a few times. <laughs> oh, the, the, the worst I ever ran into is when an opponent flipped. Uh, I was playing around Droidron. Managed to break their initial board, uh, then ran into a Drowning Mirror Force, and I was fuming. So I was like, who's playing Drowning Mirror Force in a freaking Droidron deck? I walked away from the game for a bad day. I was just like, you need to cool. You just need to calm down. You are taking this too serious. I can't think okay. it's close to that one. Link, Link Summon. What does this card do? Nothing, because he can't pay 600 life points. Yeah. Yeah, Drytron does. It is, like, 
they're blue because they represent the tears that come out of your eyes when you when you play against it. Yeah, I, I literally control a fusion monster that says if your opponent's life points hit 600 or less, they can't play the game anymore. Like, I, I literally could probably pass like seven or eight turns here. Nothing matters. It's like a Saw movie. I should give him 100 life points and let him kill himself. Like, I will say that will make the grind a little bit long. <laughs> Tribute summon driver. Uh no, we don't need to we don't need to be our more opponents. We're not really here to disrespect. And obviously Vandy Yepa does come around watching this. We're just having a bit of fun. We don't mean anything in like in overly harsh tones. Do you suppose we can stop that attack? <laughs> he can't even free boats, he has to pay six hundred one points. He for can't it. do anything. The game was over as soon as that third attack went through. Yeah. Wow, he can't so, even flip the ultimate so offering up. He's not allowed to use spell or trap cards, and he can't activate the effects of monsters. Like, so this basically highlights how ridiculous Red Eyes uh, Flare is. It Red Eyes Black Metal Flare Dragon, the Exe monster. Something like that, yeah. Red Eyes Flare Metal, I think it is. Flare Metal, yeah. How ridiculous that card would be if it was easier to summon. Uh... I thought I was going to open a lot more packs. <laughs> oh, and then you just finish the deck opening like 20 packs. Uh, I love right, this because... new mission menu, by the way. Yeah, the layout's a lot cleaner. And you can tell they got the humble brag at the bottom. 30 million downloads campaign. We just want to make sure that you can see we've been downloaded 30 million times. Even though we didn't update the game for two months. It's fine. We've got 30 million players, guys. Don't worry. We're not dead like the free people on Twitter keep posting. Nah. I don't need to burn on the flare that bad. Uh, we'll just get it later. Sword Soul stuff. Oh, yeah. I've got lots of Sword Soul things. It's only Sunny's Ecclesia. Okay. Opening this will not hurt me that bad. Let it ride. <laughs> Hey, there is a sword soul card and a royal rare. Oh, 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 hello. That's pretty cool. That's amazing for a card that you never play. I'm gonna be playing three. <laughs> oh, eventually. Oh, right, because you meant. Yeah, I think I saw in a TCG format you went from a place where you don't play any four of Albaz to a place where you then play three in every single deck. Yes. Yep, that's how it works. Oh, that makes sense. He is himself. We call this character lines, development. So. What's that now? There's that third Aluri. Uh, Fallout of Albaz is super poly on legs. If this card is normal or special summon, discard a card, fuse using guys from both sides of the field. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a smidge. Like, just a stupid Yu-Gi-Oh card in general. That is super mm -hmm. nice. Doing it again. I remember for the longest time on this uh, on this podcast, you always talked about how you never got any. Oh, you got a ghost rare. Yes, I did. I didn't realize there was ghost rares in this game. Yeah, apparently. I'm gonna guess it just didn't load the asset. Yeah, the image just didn't load for Foxy. <laughs> apparently, I went from zero of this to five of it. <laughs> Sword Soul plus Ghost Rare, yeah. Exactly. Black Razor, welcome to the chat, by the way. Glad to have you on board. I got the Brandon and High Spirit. This card's pretty cool. You reveal a monster in your hand and send a level 8 fusion monster from your extra to the graveyard with the same type that's 2500 attack and defense. Then discard the revealed monster and add Fallen of Alabaz or a monster that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Drain the end phase. If a fusion monster was sent to your graveyard this turn, you can add this card from the graveyard to your hand. So. This could get you like your incredible Ecclesia, and you can dump Titanic Clad and stuff. What is that fusion monster that we didn't cover in pools there next to your dragon? Oh, uh, which one is it? The one from the next to Plasma. This guy? This is Yukio Rising Carp. You can tribute okay. this fusion summoned card to special summon two punk monsters with different names from each other from your hand and or deck that aren't level 8 in defense mode. If you synchro summoned using this card as a material, you can target a punk you control. It can make a second attack during each battle phase, and that would be their big dragon, like the cool level 11 guy. 
Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Discard yeah. Synchro Summon, you can target cards your opponent. Big ol' bounce. Three like, bounce monsters. the whole board. <laughs> huh, like Mistworm. Mm. But even easier. That's actually pretty cool. Also, Boxy Tomb didn't load again. <laughs> We're did. getting asked by Snow, can we get some Fs Foxy Tune? <laughs> um, I'd say that's a feature, not a bug. At least that's how I'd be trying to sell it. It's like, oh, you got a really rare pool there. You should buy some more packs. You're clearly lucky. Gaia. I do love. I do love those new Gaia cards. Uh, I say new. But they released a couple of years back now. The word. Uh, what was his name? The retrained Gaia Fusion. Gaia the Dragon Champion. The Dragon Champion. That's like, yeah. I I really like this card. I think it's really cool. Oh, this is a terrible set. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah, let's do one beyond speed. See if I can get the Baron to Fleur. I mean, you're on a roll. I'd, I'd have personally bought a lottery ticket, but... Ah, nice. Baron to Fleur. Yeah, you got it! <laughs> I got it in one! <laughs> oh, and yeah, we also get to pick up our, the Synchro stuff if you do want to pivot into playing Speedroid. Mm. Oh. Yeah, so about that lottery ticket, if you've got some numbers in mind, you'd, uh, <laughs> and you'd be tricking off tonight, just just asking for a friend. Yeah, my birthday, my girlfriend's birthday. <laughs> uh, I got a Borlo Dragon. And the, if only the that was still good. Cephalon. Cephalon's pretty cool. I just opened like I mean, regular Master Pack just to see what I can get. Would you point, not want to save your gems at this point? I no. guess you just kind of like... I, I don't care for three more months. My Quartz Nistra Dragon. deck is not changing. My Draco deck is not changing. I've literally pulled everything out of every selection pack I care about right now. So... At this yeah, point, you'll have 10,000 gems in no time. Yeah. If anything, I now need 40 more to open these again, so... Just see what random ultras I get. Black Rose. Yeah. Things to chew up or add to the collection, because as you know, I am trying to just get three of every card because I'm one of those people. I care so little about gems that I bought three of this structure deck already too. Like I just, I bought every single thing in the shop. That is what you call a super fan. How much is forty gems? Give me the forty gems. Let's get it. Did they refresh the gem purchase bundles as well? They like... did. They did. Yes. Okay, that's good. Because that's kind of like the... The only the gems worth buying, yeah. <laughs> the gems are too expensive, to be honest. Like, uh, they've priced themselves quite awkwardly for, for this game. Uh, obviously, we use a lot of this to make content for our channels and that. For the regular user, I do feel like this is... They're asking a bit much. I'm All right, doing, so uh, I'm solo doing this mode, because it? I pathologically want to, like very badly. I love the Ultra Geist deck, but you can't play it in ranked because it takes too long to uh, climb. Every duel with this deck takes like twenty minutes. Have you just told us what the next twenty minutes of the stream is going to be then? <laughs> well, I'm playing against an AI, so it's actually not nearly so bad. Is that because your opponent is reading every one of your cards mm. and they're trying to figure out how to play their two hand traps? Okay. Oh, interesting. You can tribute your monster as a quick effect. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it's negate because of uh, Torgon. Oh, it's a cost, isn't it? It's yep. a cost to tribute the opponent's monster. Yeah, quick effect. You can tribute one dark monster. And this, as you pointed out, uh, yeah. you can tribute monsters your opponent controls if you controlled them. But it has to be a dark, so as long as I'm not bad. Oh, everything becomes dark, yeah. So as long as I don't summon, like, something stupid, but... Yeah, even yeah. if I was to, like, imperm this thing, it doesn't... Well, I can't, but it doesn't matter. Like... Just yeah. sucks to suck. I'm gonna lose my monster. I don't wanna, but yeah, it is about two dollars per pack. And the fact that it is possible to open ten packs and not get an ultra rare, which twenty dollars on jump cards, is kind of why it's not really worth buying gems. If if the quality of cards were on average much higher, then it would make more sense to. But it's a little bit difficult to sell that to. Uh, people when there's so many cards that you can pull that are just not useful to your collection. 
the two dollar price point on its own would be would, it's fine. It's definitely in line with industry standard. AI is not going to try and do it to me. I guess that's kind of nice. Oh, maybe, maybe. No. Okay. Cool. Kind of chooses to not treat your monster. How nice of him. That's my chicken game. I need that. Um. I don't know what this card does. Doesn't it just search for the field spell? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You discard it, search for spell. You can also tribute a monster. Um, if it was a dark monster other than this card, you can add a dark monster with two thousand or more defense. I think it is. Uh, yeah. I normally, you get diablos with it. It's the intended function. Whoa, there's like a hole in my field now. <laughs> cool. Got hit with like a meteor when I paid the lifeline. I'm uh, not gonna drop it for a thousand life game. That's okay. Another meteor. <laughs> well, yeah, they do have something similar, uh, Sereno of the Ice Barrier. Uh, basically, if you don't get an ultra rare in the first temple, say your next temple will have a get. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll have a guaranteed ultra rare. Uh, the problem with that is if you're using your free gems and you've got a thousand gems left. Oh, that's cool. That's a nice, neat little animation. Uh, you've got like a thousand gems and you buy 10 packs and you get supers. You're then going to be essentially uh, waiting until you get another thousand gems before you can pull. And then you've got to pull from that pack again. And if you say are playing free to play, uh, getting a thousand gems is about 10 days worth of play, right? Uh, with the daily tasks, is that right, Dan? Uh, how much was it a day? You get a hundred and something gems a day, right? Yes. I was saying it's... Yeah. Sorry, okay, so about seven days to get a thousand gems. That's quite a long grind for when you can get... You could just not pull an ultra rare. Yeah, true. You can get slightly over 1k, but... Still, like, in terms of real world time, what was it, like six days, you're saying, to, to get, to get one temple? This is really infuriating. I just can't draw a monster to save my life. Uh, you might, you might be dead. Um... Yeah, and 6.5 days for 10 packs, uh, when your pools could be atrocious and then your breakdown of resources is also really unfortunate uh when i say unfortunate just not it does it almost feels like you're just not getting uh, enough value out of this enchanting so it this game can be after you've bought your first deck becomes unbelievably harsh why okay holding on Okay, we're holding on. <laughs> You're not dead yet. Haltergeist is such a cool deck. It's my favorite deck of all time, although it doesn't work if I draw zero monsters the entire duel. Well, there's a good card. <sighs> It's alright, the opponent is going to summon five times this turn, so you can Nibiru and then bounce the token. And here's the first two summons. Wait, is it your opponent summons five times, or is that just five summons? Your opponent. Yeah, if your opponent... Okay, yeah, you can cheat it. You always, I always have those moments when dueling. I don't know if this is the same for any of you guys, where all of a sudden your brain just kind of makes up an illegal play, and you're like, oh wait, maybe, yeah, I, I can do this. And you're like, wait, no I can't. I've read- I put this card in my deck, I know the card doesn't work that way. Yeah, he got me. I'm just gonna start over. Nothing you can do when you brick, except try. Yeah, the- the bricks be real. Nibiru, double droplet, no monsters. Like, that was fun. Droplet is a interesting one. It's a card that's unanimously I say unanimously, it gets a lot of praise. It is a good card, but I always find whenever I put it in decks, like, 
it's it always feels like the worst card I'm putting in my deck, uh, in a way. Like, you kind of have to play it because it breaks lots of uh, setups, but at the same time, I kind of... I hate any situation where I'm forced to actually play the card because of how, how impactful discarding that one card is. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna run through our chain. Would you like to uh, play Tune Table of Contents while we're at it? <laughs> and summon your Royal Magical Library. Who was it that played um, Altergeist in the Brains anime? It was Emma Ghost. Ghost Girl. Ghost Girl, yeah. Uh, Brains was really cool. I really enjoyed watching that, that show. Uh, from the Yu-Gi-Oh! animation series. This is fine. I take zero damage and search for multi paper Seems like a fair deal. Unless you want to Solemn Strike, of course. Would you like to Solemn Strike your own guy? Ghost Gal, my, my humblest of apologies, uh, Brick. Who are they, just out of interest? They call me Brick? Uh, they are one of the wiki admins that keeps track of things no one else cares to, like how often, like... No, 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 Michael. okay, I mean, this is interesting, but I meant who, who's calling them Brick? Oh. Who's the they in, in, <laughs> I no in the name? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm always very interested to, to meet uh, you fine members of the organization group. Not the organization, just the Wikipedia. Wikipedia, ah, separate project also run by yourself. Hmm. Yeah, like uh, the first thing I saw Brick keep track of was a historic table of every forbidden and limited card ever worldwide by like date. It's literally like labeled by like month and card name and what it was at for 22 years. <laughs> so that is dedication. Yeah. Hey, look, it was Pot of Greed. Oh, okay, so you're they, but you prefer to be called Brick. Got it. And they call me Brick. That, that clarifies everything, thank you. Yeah, terrific. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I don't think you're losing this one. Yeah, no, things are feeling a little better on this one. Yeah. You, oh, you got glossy effect failure. Honestly, I didn't know that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about all the hand trap stuff with that video a little bit later this week. Uh, I actually also think that's one of the... You guys can confirm this in the chat as well. Uh, one of the most popular things that I find myself searching for whenever I'm trying to play a deck is uh, how do you use hand traps against that deck? And how do you use hand traps... Uh, what matchups you should be using your hand traps in? Uh, like the particular... Because that's ultimately what you go tends to come down to you memorize your combos and then it's just a case of understanding the breakpoints and the opponent's combo that you're going to interact with. Ultimately, it did make most trap cards pretty terrible. Uh, although that's kind of, it feels a little bit moot me saying that when you're playing a very trap heavy deck right now. But the existence of had trapped kind of made the rest of the trap cards in the game a little bit less relevant. Oh, that and the fact that you can't play the trap card till after your opponent summons everything in the universe. Yeah. Just some more multi faker shenanigans. Aw, oh, the Orochi hit the Kunkiri. I do like the meteorites hitting the ground. They should, I just imagine these little Nibiru's destroying the field. That's the foolish barrel one. Yeah, Well, yeah, this is why 
in actual fact, my advice is if you're just starting out is as much as I say, build from building a collection perspective, getting the hand traps as quickly as possible is very important. You don't really get to use them until platinum, uh, because you'll be playing against um, a lot of decks where the majority of the hand traps aren't as good. Things like Drawn Lockbird, which can absolutely be backbreaking. Well, prior to the the May update, the the meta like Drawn Lockbird was by far my favorite hand trap because it was against the matchups that matter to me. It stopped my opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Absolutely awful the whole way through gold when you get summoning barrier statue, setting four cards, and equipping it with mage power. And that was good enough in some cases because the, uh, the free faced hand cards. <laughs> Just, uh... I'm just going to sit here saying no until he stops trying to make me say no. Well, the AI doesn't have a concede button. I know. So, wow. do you mostly <laughs> do you mostly play um, the Altergeist deck here because you really enjoy it and you just can't play it on ladder? So yeah, it's basically. The Altergeist deck is the deck I enjoy the most of any Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It just consistently feels so egregiously stupid. Every little thing I do is just like, why was I allowed to do that? Like, okay, but the card I just bounced for cost still killed Meloseek, so how about I go search my deck for a free card? Ah, uh, but you tributed a monster, so you can get back his Diablos. Yeah, but that's okay, because I can get rid of this that I'm not using anymore and negate the Diablos from coming back. And you can also get back to Giz Orochi. I can if I don't want to use Faker. It's a decision I'm... I make the decision about Orochi in the battle phase. Yeah. Okay, now it's finally the, the my main phase one. <laughs> so, uh, let's get rid of this, just in case I forget to. <laughs> I did see a post on uh, Facebook. God, oh, opponents are... Field. I couldn't deal damage, I attacked with everything, and I realized they were a hacker and I succeeded the game. You know, it's like, Kanabi, you, your game, you need to fix this. And you see, like, on his side of the field, he's got a chicken game face up. And his opponent's on a thousand life points, and he's like, Okay, so somebody didn't read the... They read the good part of their card. They didn't read the rest of it. Uh, that is something I have been guilty of before. When you read the Yu-Gi-Oh card, you go, This is all upside! And you just, like, don't read the 90% of the card. Which is, this is why you can't do what you're thinking. And this is where we find out if I'm orochi or not. That one! And then that went through, so now Orochi comes back and finishes the duel. Otherwise, I would have flipped up this trap and brought out Multifaker. And then that would have been 1200. Slam. Congratulations, you have now earned your two legacy tickets. I know. <laughs> Was I that just worth it? to see what the last loner deck was. I know that the last duel is Danger Dark World. But I want to see what the loner deck they give you is, because you can't check that until you unlock it. Why do they make me play against Danger Dark World? You just go on, just go on you. Danger Thunder Dragon. Danger Thunder Dragon. Okay. The deck from twenty nineteen Nats. Okay. You just go on Yugopedia and it will tell you. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> the irony being that you, uh, as a manager of Yugopedia, is just like, yeah, I need to unlock this. Like, otherwise, it's not going to be content for my website. <sighs> There's, I literally, like, Colossus, Titan, uh, Titanic Galaxy, oh my goodness. Does that do anything against your opponent's deck, Colossus? Uh, well, yeah, because they're playing Danger Dark World. Yeah, so, they can't add cards to their hands except by drawing them, right? Yeah, so they can't use, like, the Snow Search and the Nessie and stuff. Ah, okay, yeah, it definitely does have some. Yeah, the opponent's deck seems a little bit... Questionable. Okay. Well, if I beat this one with Alter Gas, I get 200 gems. Let's try it. Let's see how bad it'll go. 
I've got a deck that's whole modus operandi is pick apart my opponent's cards, and he's playing a deck that's pick apart my own cards. So. Oh. <laughs> Feels like you might be favored then, just a little bit. Uh, he's definitely going to help me as we go. So. Ah, the cheeky babuska. Yeah. Never forget the cheeky babuska. It wins you games. It, it... He just card destruction me. That was rude. Okay. I actually had that in one of the replays I'd say for uh, this week's stream. Um, my opponent... No, this was actually uh, when I was playing the Creepo deck. Uh, opponent card destruction's my bricked hand and then I just draw into a full combo. And it's like, oh. That seems pretty nice. Starter deck Yugi card destruction. This card was legal for the longest time, and it was actually—it's actually a really insane card. The AI is pushing lots of buttons. Regain. So if you had that, if you had that in the Biru, <laughs> I didn't think there was any way he'd summon five times. I'm not gonna lie to you. I just didn't see him like not missing a single danger effect. But whatever. Uh, hey, look, it's that double droplet hand that you'd love to. Yeah, tell me about it. I had an amazing hand, and then he card destruction me into a brick hand. It's great. I get one more draw. Ah. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. Oh, no, yes! Know. Thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh. This is these these are the moments. These are the moments. Or you curse the or you curse the deck building. He is smart enough to pop it as well. The AI is thinking. Cool. Hey, if you preemptively played Maxi, you'd have got to draw a card there. Mm, if I had shotgunned it. Yeah, that's Maxi, and why not? As soon as I saw like how stupid my hand was, I wanted to surrender, but I was like, maybe he'll leave my chicken game and forget that he can't hurt me and I'll get a free turn. Uh, it's 42 if I pay the life, so I can't afford to pay the life, then I can't afford to not pay the life, and that's it. And we're going to game two of this best of infinity, <laughs> yeah. uh, where Dan tries to win 200 gems. Oh my god. The thing is, I'm using my Geist deck that I'd be playing in real life, and things like Droplet and Nibiru and stuff don't tend to work on these. Like, yeah, this is this is the uh, problems with gold climbing is that yeah. the cards that you kind of need for competitive play are not so good there, and it does then raise the question: then why don't those less played decks that uh, are immune to those very popular cards, where your deck can brick, your competitive deck can brick so much, why do you those gold decks not climb? So I'll pose that question to you, Dan. Uh, because the pilots are still also not able to capitalize on it. But then you surely then somebody uh, from the top levels of competitive play would be able to take one of these gold tier decks that's unaffected by uh, a lot of your common interactions between droplets, effect veilers, and stuff like that, and still turn it into a plat level deck. So why does that not happen? Well, the answer is because the deck's bad and it doesn't go off. It's not consistent enough. Um, and and yeah. your opponent doesn't... Sorry, I was trying to focus on what I was going to banish because I know I'm going to... Oh, right, sorry. I thought you were waiting for me. I, I think it was a rhetorical question. And I was just like, I'll just go ahead and answer it then. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's like those stun decks. Like the, problem, the reason why you shouldn't craft them is... Your opponent, you don't automatically win those situations. And your deck will... Unfortunately, brick you more often, more often than you can afford to to keep maintain a fifty one percent win percentage. A shotgun max C. Well, it's AI, so the AI is just that's it. The Lure of Darkness. 
I think you once told me that decks playing trade-ins, Allure of Darkness and stuff had a significantly lower win rate percentage. If it was minusing or breaking even, which he just did, neither of those benefited from it. So yeah, every time he plays Allure of Darkness, his win rate goes down from that. Dark World Dealings had the lowest win rate of any card ever, and Danger Dark World had the lowest win rate of any deck ever. So Even more than Star Decks. Even more. Well, no one played Starter Decks on Dueling Book. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, your opponent succeeded in normal summoning a monster. He sure did. I'm so proud of him. Chupacabra. Nice. Nice. Ah, the Chupacabra. Yeah, my funniest story... Well, I said not even my story. But the funniest thing about the Chupacabra is that... I don't know if you do, but Mike Tyson, the boxer, had an animated series like Scooby-Doo. Did you ever know about this? No, I didn't. No, oh my god, it's brilliant. And he solves every problem in the same way you'd expect Mike Tyson to solve every problem. By punching it in the face. <laughs> so, it's like kind of like these guys in costumes and stuff. He's like, I'm going to find a dude. I'm going to punch him. <laughs> it's like, I mean, he just beats up this guy in a Dupacabra costume. Uh, it's just, it's just brilliant. Uh, and I don't know why, but every time I see the Yu-Gi-Oh card, I'm just thinking of just Mike Tyson just beating this guy up in a Dupacabra costume. <laughs> That was a weird thing for the AI to do. Not activate his monster until he saw if he could pop my back row. That's the opposite of how humans behave. Hey, look, Maxi. An AI can do a lot for you. Uh, for example, it can scrape a million tweets uh, as long as the API limits allow you to do that in a day. And then you can also have the AI tell you whether these tweets were negative or positive, depending on what your ego wants to read it as. But at the same time, it can't uh, identify pictures of a cat accurate, more accurate than a three-year-old. So AI is kind of a weird thing at the moment. Obviously, it's going to get better and kill us all. We've all seen Terminate, but <laughs> it's still interesting that you could do such complicated, incredible things with AI, and then some of the simpler, uh, a little, still a little bit out of reach. Mike Tyson mysteries, yes, anti, anti TCB. Uh, I absolutely love that show. That was so it was so good. He's I don't think it's on Netflix or anything like I'm that. I'm not going to use spoofing until I know what all my Ultra Geist cards in my hand are going to be. <laughs> so, hey, so it's fair. the cheeky Babuska! Careful, that card can't be destroyed while it's in attack position. He's got a Divine Arsenal Zeus, you. <laughs> Oh, you've got the Kaiju, so it really doesn't matter. I draw another card. Oh, Hulu and Prime Video have it. Oh, that's that's great. I did not know it was on Prime. Nightmare Phoenix for spoofing? This is really happening? Okay. Well, I suppose now's as good a time as any to put back a card I have two of. Go get my Kunkiri. Now he can't attack me. Can we not pretend for a second you're not loving every second of this? Like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to get my... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to negate your attack. Oh, it's such a bother. This attack Come on. card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this attack. Okay, so I have to negate Nightmare Phoenix with it. That's weird, but whatever. Oh, no. My one weakness. A monster with 600 or more attack. What am I doing? Leave my one weakness, <laughs> my one weakness my the monster with slightly higher attack points. <laughs> a nightmare unicorn. I would have, I would have gone for Zeus, but you know, I, uh, I feel like, I feel like there might have been a reason for that play. I'm not sure if the opponent's deck even plays Zeus. Oh, what I really needed was Pot of Greed. I gotta say, that was, that was important. Drawing, drawing this with this many cards in my hand. Oh. Oh no, what are we gonna do now? Okay, well. I'm gonna the do story the deck. The story deck. Oh, is that from the uh, Magical Hats challenge? Uh, sorry, the SP challenge. <laughs> so much I beat my own rocket deck to beat it with. <laughs> you have to discard a trap monster, a monster to activate this. Okay, bye, multi faker. Hi, multi faker.
I said, it's a deck that's based on making, like, getting rid of your opponent's cards one at a time, and he plays a deck that just says, get rid of all my own cards. Yeah, you're essentially hacking and stealing resources from the opponent. While my opponent just decided to get, like, there we go. Hi. I did it. Time to play. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, now you can now you can spend the next three turns actually closing the game out. Well, yeah, that's the other thing about Altergeist is that you do sit here and take your sweet time. Uh, but I should just kill him next turn. So. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like the opponent can just draw that one-off bird core with four comps. Even if yeah. he did, he has there's nothing he can do against this board. Once you have two Altergeist well, yeah. in protocol, um, you go like this. You set it to on so that Master Duel can't cheat you. I don't care, we're getting a trap back. I've got so many cards in my hand, I have to discard an upstart anyway. And then you go call the Haunted, and you put the thing right here. And now if that card he drew was a spell or trap, I contribute the Marionetter to kill it, and if it's a monster, Protocol tributes the Marionetter to kill that instead. So it literally did not matter what this card was. Cool. Plus three. This is why we play Orochi right here. Plus one. Orochi, so, so good. This Plus card was actually the bane two. of my existence. Playing um, <laughs> the Agnes deck. Although I did figure out that I could eventually beat it, uh, Cyberus Quantum Dragon, because you could then get the two attacks by bouncing the Orochi back to her hand, and then the quick play spell, getting back a yellow, gave you the exact right amount of damage to end the game, even for Orochi. Orochi, destroy a card. Yep. What? <laughs> I was just having fun. I don't care. <laughs> but our viewers, they clearly want entertainment. Four. Well, what's more entertaining than watching me kill my own character now, even? I, I'm sure it got the AI right in the feels. <laughs> no, I don't want him to get my protocol. Dark Fluid was always one of those cards that I considered playing in the deck. Uh, one of the commenters actually on the combo video we did for the Agnisters was talking about Dark Fluid Dragon. I always preferred playing the Arrival and the, Quant uh, the Cybers Quantum Dragon. Uh, over the option for dark fluid, I so I never really, I never actually really tested it out. I just never had the reason to. Math. You got there eventually. <laughs> I I told you I would do it on the next turn. I mean, you didn't shout final turn or dramatic. No. I did quote Spider-Man No Way Home very, very loosely, though. In the least spoilery way possible. Hey, I got 200 gems. You know what that means? I'm gonna go open 10 packs. Oh yeah, you just ticked over a thousand. Congratulations. <laughs> Give me the garbage. Oh. We're starting with the Ultra Rare. It's actually a playable one as well, glossy. Foolish Barrel, not bad. I got an e telly for the first time. That's gonna come in handy later. That seems like it'd be pretty good with some of the cards we talked about a little bit earlier. Hmm, the punk engine stuff. Is e telly at three in this? It's Master Tool, so probably. Why is there not a search? <laughs> They're not, are they alphabetized? Uh, I don't think so, because, like, D or... Oh, it's, it's, I think they're sort of my release date. Oh god, the worst way of organizing the cards. Uh, so it's not there. It's that too. Okay. That's pretty nice. Are you... Oh. I was about to say, oh wow, you opened a Super Poly, I remember. We're looking at it for a bit now. Yes. Oh, That's how long my days been. Okay. Ah, Master Duel. Look at all these secrets I have. 
the first heroes, champions of hope. They all have really cool names. You'd think that you'd run out of like fancy adjective, impactful noun, but no. Like Master Duel came out and Konami was like, here's a hundred more. <laughs> so, ugh. We were really good at naming stuff, that's for sure. We always find, we always find a name. I've always liked Primal Origin because it's almost ox not oxymoronic, but like really redundant, but in the coolest possible way. Well, like Order of Chaos. No, so that one's antithet antithetical. Order and Chaos are opposite. Primal means first and Origin means first. Ah, I see. Firsty firsts, let's go. <laughs> this is the set that will win the tournament. It is literally first the set. Uh, new gates are coming. The Danger Files and Dual Strategy 2. That is not... There, there was like a big data leak, and that's part of like why we didn't stream yesterday was like, look at all these things that are in the code, but like probably 35% of what was in that leak was added to the game today. So it was better to stream today and only talk about what was actually in the game. It's just a good idea. Speaking of which, do I have any replays? Just exhibition ones, which are from like April 16th, so no. <laughs> Yeah, I did put I did put quite a few replays up on my channel, uh, my main account, so just under Metorgus. Okay. Uh, well, you are my friend. So. Friend duel profile. A replay. Against does that say relaxed duel and demon? <laughs> so that second demon. that second one is the one I want to save for the hand trap discussion. Okay. Because that's a very good illustration. So I probably shouldn't have said that one to public, but. If you take a look at the dates, actually, on all of those... They're from, uh, like, April 28th and stuff, so this would have been right at the end of the format. Yeah, at the end of the format, I just decided, oh yeah, I forgot to get to Plat 1, do that now. <laughs> but that's that's how good Attic Misters was during, during this format, and no one was on it. Look, I hate that you have this. Every time I see it, I'm just like, damn you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm actually... Going back to this deck, I was playing three copies of, um... Three copies of uh, Pot of Desires, but I'm kind of because of how ridiculous Gachiri is. I'm actually almost tempted to take all three copies of Pot of Desires out of the deck, so I never have a chance of accidentally banishing the uh, the Gachiri. In Perm and Max C and Dryden, which if he was really smart, he would use and pop your guy right now before it can go into a Link monster, but. Not, and now you get the field spell. Not that you didn't already have it, but he doesn't know. Well, that. yeah, it, the idea is that it just gives your opponent a chance to, to bait it. It has double impermanent. Well, that's two columns down, but like I said, you can see the nice animation here. Oh, no, you can't? Okay. Oh, the imperm well, that... failed. The second imperm didn't do anything. Uh, nice. Yeah, he destroys my field spell. So, if you've ever played against the uh, Ignister Land, um, this is not not the best play, because you can just get the field spell back. So because the replay is older than the animation update, you don't get the animation in the replay? That's peculiar. Yeah. This guy just oh, yeah. threw that ash off Max C. Like, <laughs> but you've already got the doughy on, so... You're the one telling me to buy lottery tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is, um... This is a, so a bit of a highlight of why, like, Max C is not the be all and end all of every card. It is if you're playing the right things to support it. Like, if it draws into Droll or Max, uh, Max C. If it draws into Droll or Nibiru, Lancia, like, turn stoppers. Yeah, so you can actually look at the opponent's graveyard and see how much they've tried to interact with this deck, <laughs> uh, interact with me, and how I'm still going. There's, like, double Imper, Max C, Ash Blossom. Call One, two, three, four, five. Opponents try to interact with me five times. Six if you can't drive. Six, yeah. So opponents six interactions, and I'm still going. This was definitely the best deck prior to today's update. There's no way adding Mister wasn't the best deck in Master Duel. Yeah, no, I still, I still 100% agree with that. Uh, the Go Second version, especially. Uh, I think the decks for making out a rival were not getting the most ridiculous value out of this deck. And if it wasn't for the fact that Artifact Scythe is now going to be absolutely everywhere, I'd 
We're already so saying to people, yeah, just go ahead and build this deck. Well, and like DPE is hard-ish for it to play through. Although... Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is why Gachiri is insane, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, so Permanent Maxis yep. plays a lot of stuff, still isn't able to stop the Attic Mr. Train just running them over. Uh, it's just, yeah, no, it's, it's so hard when you've got, when your deck can keep going and keep going through all of that interaction, uh, that's when you're on the right deck. If this is a problem that I have with a lot of the last format is trying to do some of the more casual decks is that you just don't have those options. You've got like a two card combo and if you get negated once, that's bad. If you get negated twice, it's like, okay, my turn's just over. Whereas with Attic Mistos, it's just never going to end. Hmm. Well, and that's I've bricked, essentially. Oh my god, what's his name? Heavenly Prison? Yes. And I have three of them! Look at me go! <laughs> there we go. I've just wanted to do that since I built the deck. Like, this guy does a lot more than just get any spell or trap in the game. He also says you can't be dusted. Okay, well, this card is a real world's effect. Set cards on the field can't be destroyed by card. This spell is activated. So. Just saw his coffee hat. Oh my god, they just decided multi faker needed to be bigger. You have to add this card while this card's not revealed. You can reveal one and set one spell trap right from your deck or banish into any interface. Oh so, god, yeah, this is this card is like multi faker with three fives and attack yeah. points. So on my turn I reveal it, and then until the end of your turn, he stays revealed. And while he's revealed, you can't even pop my set monsters. So he's really good against Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. He just like completely turns that card off. And then um, if a face down card is activated, I can summon him from my hand. But you can only use one of the two effects per turn. So I can't reveal him and then flip something up and summon him on my own turn. I can, however, just do something as simple as set up Star Goblin and flip it and go 3,000 monster during my own first turn. I can just do that. Um, on your turn, while he's already revealed, I can also activate a trap, quick play spell, and down he'll come. And if he does, he sets a spell or trap from my deck that will stay there until my end phase, even though it's your turn. And I like, see when I tell you the number of duels that have gone like Sky Prison get one for one, and then one for one gets Valor, and Valor gets, or it doesn't have to get Valor, but it can. Uh, Valor and somebody is Huck of Fibrax, second Valor, get Selene, Selene bring back Valor, get access code, pop their board, 5300 plus 3000, they lose. Yeah, that's, that's pretty insane. So your deck actually now does something more than pick your opponent apart for six, uh, for six turns before deciding that. Oh wow, this is an impossibly difficult card to search for, apparently. Yeah, one for one. Uh, you need to set the filters to ultra rare spell card. I had this trouble when I was trying to do the Karibo deck. Why is, is it not there? Just do you... Yeah, because you've only got to set it to show cards that you own. Ah, uh, yes. That'll do it. Now it's even harder to search for. <laughs> ultra rare spell card. Alright, All right, it's there. on the top row. One for one. Yeah, the reason, again, like... Uh, you saw me struggling with a lack of monsters and stuff. I'm missing a card that says go get a Melo Seek. <laughs> it's, it's very annoying. Uh, I play this deck with 49 cards in real life, and then I've added 7 cards via the uh, free upstarts that you're given. Uh, but I don't have Ultra Rare Points to finish that. That's unfortunate. You could have ultra rare points, but we both know that you don't want to dismantle anything. No, I don't. Not that I don't have like a thousand of. Although I did just open a bunch of packs, actually. I forgot I just did that. God, I'm gonna have to find one for one again. I hate how they do their search and, and dismantle all extra cards and hey, ultra rare points. Well, really? Just supers? How many ultras did I pull? Like the okay, no, whatever. He pulled a lot, but apparently he didn't own a lot of those ultras. Okay. So your kind just got flagged. Like, yeah, we're gonna give this person that stay retained, uh, and I know you won't open anything good out of a pack for another six months. <laughs> that's not how it works, by the way, guys. I don't want you to forget that's. Uh, Why? That's how we're doing. Yeah, I can dismantle. What the heck? Oh, you plan. 
Um, oh, because I've got hey. the filter searching for literally one for one. <laughs> Still. How some of those cards were showing up when you were... <laughs> Quite curious. Wait, you're going to get rid of your one and only rose, Black Rose Dragon? It's my extra one. Oh, okay. I technically have an extra Claritus, but I can get rid of that. That's 28. I'm trying to find something that's I've got like two of, of like a Link monster that I would never play two of, you know? That's oh. the easiest thing to dismantle for me. Oh, this, by the way, this is the card. Um, the 2500 attack thing that you dump from your extra deck to the graveyard to search your deck for that incredible Ecclesia girl. And then this guy says, in the end phase, if he was sent to the graveyard, you can special summon Fallen of Alabaz from your deck. And Fallen of Alabaz says when it's summoned, Super Poly, and you can do that on your opponent's turn because that was a quick play that dumped this card. Like, it's, it's a whole thing. The, the Alabaz stuff is getting started. It's getting warmed up. Um, and for you guys at home, we are planning to do a full deck feature for it over a week. So we'll put out a video which will be a deck guide and then sort of like a combo guide for you guys to really understand the ins and outs of the decks. If you do want to climb the ladder yourself, you'll have a good starting point for doing so. Let's say a good starting point. It's the guides that we do are very, very detailed on this channel. Hmm. Absolutely. Also, for anyone who's been following Bookbag Turbo, this is the more recent version of it. This deck is more fun to climb gold with because Adagnister, like, well, the way we built it, it's uh, more struggly with some of the more casually decks where this deck doesn't care what you're playing. But this is the most recent, like, major edition. Um, the first time I read this card, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool for it, but it conflicts with Monarchs Erupt. And it turns out it doesn't. Uh, you activate it in your pendulum scale, and if you have no cards in your extra deck except for him, you can destroy him and draw a card. So you can technically play three of this even. Play it in your pendulum zone, pop it, draw one, and then if you draw a second, the only thing in your extra deck is another copy of him. Pop it, still draw. But it is once per turn. However, uh, he can't be normal summoned or set, and you special summon from your face-up extra deck by having no cards in your extra deck except for copies of him. So you can get them back out of your extra deck, which turns Monarchs Erupt back on. Uh, oh. I read that far and I was like, well, that's kind of cool. But the problem is that they kill it and turn Monarchs Erupt off. And the answer to that is no, because if this face-up card in a monster zone leaves the field, it gets banished. Hmm. So this thing's just Upstart Goblin. Like, you just pop it down, pop himself, draw a card, summon him, and then when he dies, he vanishes. So it's just an 1800 monster. And One uh, of the replays we did last week, you drew eight cards in one in this deck. Yes. My opponent was playing stun, again, uh, highlighting why that deck kind of gets stuck in gold. It's just like, okay, I'm doing one for one trade. Finally simplified the game state. One. Card of Demise, four, Pot of Desires. Five, uh, six, seven. Sat my phone. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. I believe at a first go through that you can draw eleven cards in one turn with this deck. And then you could search for a twelfth with Diagram and then search uh, 13, 14, 15 with these three, and then this guy can float into a 15th card, or 16th card. So you could thin your deck 16 cards in one turn if you really tried. Do you think this deck would struggle in Platinum Plus? Uh, not really. Uh, I definitely got this deck to Platinum One. This is one I did in um, March. Like, uh, January, I did Adagnister, and it was whatever. This is the one that I got to Plat in March. Ah, uh, I see. My January and February plat ones were Agnister. My March was Utopia. Then April, yeah, I just did Agnister, it's like on the last day. Mm. Uh, because I also got the um, Wing Dragon Aratu plat one on yeah. a fresh account. Well, and that's the uh, other in thing. April. In April, I didn't even get to plat. I just let myself fall. <laughs> to, like I fell to like gold five in April, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then on May 1st, I was silver five, and I was like, okay. <laughs> now I'm back up to like gold four from silver five in the last couple of days. I waited until May 9th today uh, before climbing out of silver because I wanted to wait for like the ban list to kick in because for the same reason I didn't play in April, Master Duels didn't change. I, they released those two selection packs, but as far as I was concerned, it had no impact on the format at all. Not one of those cards outside of Baron de Fleur mattered. 
and I mm. I have never had Baron de Fleur summoned on me yet. So I just kind of lost all interest and was like, I've gotten to plat one three times now. Doing it a fourth time will just be doing the exact same thing for the sake of doing it again. So I was waiting until an update, and now that I have one, I can play tragedy and comedy and claw my way up to what is now diamond one, I suppose. Yeah, and I could have hit diamond playing that Ignister deck before this update. Uh, now I'm going to have to build something new. I feel like if DPE is really as popular as it is here, and I don't see any reason it wouldn't be, uh, either I'd have to reconfigure a big chunk of the deck to account for. Uh, granted, that said, you still play things like the Kaijus, which yes. are going to be very good against DPE. And they have to destroy one of your one of their cards and one of your cards. They can't just do it in your standby phase. Mm -hmm. We're in that sweet spot right now where DPE was at his strongest because the following set of the TCG has the Dark Charmer link, so when they pop their DPE, you summon your Charmer link and take their DPE from them. Right, okay, so this is before the... Yeah, and that set Probably in the TCG came out in January, and DPE came out in November, and as you can imagine, not a whole lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! got played in December. So DPE's, like, Super Rain was basically the month of November, and that's what Master Duel has currently landed on. So we're right in the heart of, like, maximum DPE time, but again, things like Super Poly to just take it, Kaiju's tributing over it, there's a lot of different things you can do to them. I probably could just still play Agnister, uh, to be fair. But it'd be nice to try it. I really want to learn Dragon Soul. So, yeah, when you got time to teach me that, that would be that would be great. And then we can put together a feature and stuff for the channel. For you guys. So you guys at home can learn and not make all the same mistakes that we're going to make playing these decks initially. Yeah. For anyone looking for, like, a head start or sneak peek on the Sword Soul deck, type those five letters in and read these guys, because that's the Sword Soul deck right there. Do you just play all of them? You pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's just like one of each color minimum. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, all these tenny dudes say like if you control a normal monster and tokens count. Oh. So, yeah, like bad, bad things happen. If you control no, no effect monster, special summons back in your hand. If you control a face up non effect monster, banish it from the graveyard, target a banished worm, and add it to your hand. Ah, uh, right, okay. If you control. No effect monsters. Okay, but you would because you go. Yeah, if you kill the sword thing. soul guy for the token, you control an effect monster. But if I have this guy in my hand, I just special summon this guy first before I play my sword soul monster. And then yeah. after this guy, then normal summon your sword soul, get your token, synchro, link, do whatever. Ah, uh, right, okay. If you control no effect monsters. Okay, but you would because you go. Yeah, normal if you kill the thing. sword soul guy for the token, you control an effect monster. But if I have this guy in my hand, I just special summon this guy first before I play my Sword Soul monster. And then yeah. after this guy, then normal summon your Sword Soul, get your token, synchro, link, do whatever you're gonna do. Uh, probably synchro, because you're synchro locked by the token, but if you control a face-up non-effect monster, such as the token, you can banish this card from the graveyard, target one card your opponent controls, and bounce it back to their hand. Seems pretty good. Yeah, like that would just out their DPE <laughs> if they didn't use it already. Like. There's, there's a lot of like what these Tenny guys just kind of add to the deck. Again, free summon from your hand. This is why I said like, even if they have like five interrupts, you just summon this thing and like, okay, they pop it with DPE, summon the red one that I just showed you. Then normal summon, like you just keep pushing things through one at a time. But again, if this guy's in your graveyard and you control that token, you can banish this from the graveyard to special summon a Tenny monster from your deck. So I need to find a level six one to go with the Level yeah. four uh, token to synchro summon the ten, which mm -hmm. is the. Uh, it's not the skill. It's not the breakthrough skill. Synchro monster. What was no, the yeah, level ten? When, when a card is banished, it banishes a monster they control and a guy out of their grave. Ah, yeah, the DD Crow, basically two thirds of a Trishula. Yeah. As a trigger effect yeah. that you can play during your turn and their turn. Yeah. Cannot be destroyed aye, by aye, battle aye. with an effect monster. If you control no other effect monsters, you can destroy effect monsters you found control is up to the number of tokens <laughs> or vanillas in your graveyard. Yeah, Tenny Sword Soul is really cool. And that's what I'm gonna go over with you, but like this is their sneak peek into like just the horrendousness that is like if you control a token and it is Honest. destroyed by battle or card effect, banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of those destroyed monsters and special summon it. If you control no guy, like just free body, free body, free body. 
the ten your sword soul deck is just free bodies for days. Is this deck harder to play than the Agnes? Um, it's Agnister is a big upfront learning curve, and then the deck kind of plays itself. This one has a more gradual uphill curve of learning as you go, but never gets as high as what Adagnister was for you on day one. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because there's some decks where I kind of look at it and uh, cause my brain to melt a bit. I was looking at Speedroid uh, for a little while, and the problem with Speedroid is because you're not guaranteed to resolve certain effects the way that you want to, so you have to remember combo lines based on uh, out random outcomes that could happen. Like, uh, there's the roulette wheel where you roll dice and then you get um, monsters that equal the level. And because you can roll uh, any number, you've kind of got to remember the combos in any possible outcome. And it's just like, it was too much for the time I wanted to put into it. I was just like, oh, it's a bit too much. I'll get back to it. Like, I'd like to do a feature for speed roads at some point, but it's just a case of like, for the time I've got available to me now to play, I'm, I don't want to learn something that's going to be um, 50 steps really easy to mess up. Right. So, like, remember that um, you said the blue one was way better because, like, it drew a card and stuff? The other yeah. one says banish a worm from your graveyard to summon the token. This card here says send a worm from your deck to the graveyard. And then if you happen to control a token, you also get to search for another tenny monster as well. Okay, which is going to be the quick effect bounce monster or something. Yeah. Is it quick effect? I can't remember. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this deck. Yeah. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun to learn. It's getting a little bit late here over in England. Is there anything else you want on tonight's stream? Uh, no, that's probably good. We've covered three hours worth of stuff and the entire new update, which was a lot. I, I feel like something most people were looking for is how do I play Despia? I know a bunch of my friends personally were like, what does a Despia deck look like after the update? And the answer is basically this, what you're looking at, just DPE, Fright for Package, Despia stuff. Um, you absolutely play this guy. There is no world where this card is not going in your deck. And then it is like three of this and three of Luber, not two and two, like you see a lot of people playing. You see people doing that because of Rite of Aramisia. Um, Thankfully, that's not in Master Duel yet, even though the punk cards are. Uh, once Red of Aramisia comes out, the podcast might take a hit. I don't know if Matt will keep playing, but we'll see. Um, oh, wait, what? <laughs> uh, there's, uh, you remember like the old Sky Striker sets? Fur Hire, Sky Striker, Vampire, or um, Nepsis, yeah. Crank Kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you... I worked on a lot of those sets, yes. so of course I remember them. Yeah, but like how they were designed to be like just three little baby decks featuring old school reprints. Uh, yeah. One of those sets came out in February called Grand Creators, and one of the three decks in it was actually that punk stuff I was showing you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other three that we didn't get is called The Adventurers, and they arguably make Yu-Gi-Oh! unplayable as a game. Um, I, I know that my locals' attendance fell from 45 to 20 after they came out, and has not yet recovered. Wow. Was he, was any of the um, recent updates that have been limited lists addressing that problem? In Japan they did. In Japan, two of the cards are already at one, but they're two new here, so they're all still at three. Yeah, I'll be interested, because... Uh... There's another podcast that I listen to, uh, and they talk quite a lot about the DPE engine and the adventure engine. The problem is, I don't really, because I don't really follow the TCG that much. Uh, when I say that much, I see bits coming up on social media, but I don't follow it on a competitive level. I very much only focus on Master. I don't really know what they do or the ins and outs. Uh, right. And it sounds disgusting. It, sounds, it almost sounds like just with a number of cards, you've just got one card, which is. In a nutshell, it, uh, it's a package of nine cards that every single deck on the planet plays, and it says negate the first hand trap your opponent plays of every turn. It seems pretty good when um, you need to resolve two hand traps to stop a modern competitive deck. Well, it, it creates a bit of a paradox where a one, card a one hand trap hand becomes worse than a zero hand trap hand because the one hand trap's not going to do anything and now when it comes to your turn and you have to play through my board 
you only have five cards to do it instead of six. You literally would have been better off if you just didn't have any hand traps. And then if you want to play enough hand traps to open two of them, and you just stuff your deck with like 18 to 20 of them, you're just going to have a lot of these hands that just are terrible, especially going first in game one. Like this just monstrously inconsistent deck that, especially since you yourself are also playing the nine adventurer cards, plus your 14 hand traps, it's 23 cards of your deck that have been accounted for before you even picked what deck you're playing. And it causes a self-feeding problem because then you need to deck that as many stars as possible to compensate for the fact that the rest of your deck. You're going to be drawing three, four hand trap hands and then drawing a hand trap off the top when you go to play. Yep. So and you're kind of forced to play one card starter decks. Yep. Which or, are going to be adventure decks. Or using your hand traps to make five racks and seeing how far you can take him. And that's where like Dagda and DPE and Anaconda and like decks that are just piles of engines have become popular because if you don't have something like e Telly for that body to get a trap and also a five racks because your hand doesn't do anything without just the e Telly. So, yeah, like that that's what Yu-Gi-Oh has become in the TCG in real life right now, and it's not fun. <laughs> it's, it's just not very fun. But um, Master Duel is not there yet, and honestly, maybe it won't be as bad in Master Duel. I know that in the OCG, they already addressed the cards. They may literally just release those things at one. They, they did that with DPE. They already hit Fusion Destiny. Fusion Destiny didn't get hit in the OCG until DPE had been out for four months. Yeah, which so, makes sense. Uh, they they very much, like, ahead of time hit a lot of this stuff that just came out. They did hit the Virtual World Sword Soul deck. Like, there's Sword Soul Tenny that I've been covering with you, but there is still a Virtual World Sword Soul deck, and VFD's legal this time. That was not uh, the case in real life. <laughs> I don't know if I can bring myself to play a deck that has... Uh, VD, VFD in it when I know that that well you get the, the crystals back anyway right so it's almost like there's no disadvantage to playing it whereas in real life it'd be a case of like secondary market value <laughs> falls through the floor yeah although VFD was only ever a super rare in real life so he was never more than like eight to nine dollars which is nice oh um speaking of which this card those of you at home watching if you have this card in real life from back when Donnie Majesty came out like a year ago go dig it out uh, it's $45. That is quite a lot of money. It was, uh, it was a buck ninety nine four weeks ago. This is kind of like, this is a problem with, uh, you got, well, you could have just, you could have just bought like 20 of them and been sat on them. And yeah, you could have done really well out of it. Or they could have just easily dropped down to five cents. It's just a case of, you can spot cards like this that are going to spike in value when you understand when you really understand the game, but it almost ends up becoming like a full-time job mm -hmm. to figure that out. I literally did this for for 10 years, and I can tell you that to be a vendor, to be able to spot these cards, like the thing is for me is like I had the advantage of, well, I was working on future stuff, so I could see when cards were gonna go up. Um, obviously, you never do anything about it. You wouldn't never buy or sell cards while you're working for the company, except be a massive conflict of interest, but for a regular vendor, I can totally see where it's like, if this is all you do, then yeah, you can get these deals of a lifetime. Like if you find all these cards, but then when, all of a sudden, when you go to a vendor, I want to buy 10 of these cards. You get like the um, the guys who cancel your orders, but the cards go up in value. And they're like, oh yeah, we can't fulfill this. Order. You see that they've got the cards listed a day later at the full price. Mm. And then the vendor's saying, well, you're just trying to rip me off and get more value. And it's like, well, you're not fulfilling an order. Um, because the cards because you're going to lose value uh, and it's you know it's just all, all reasons that i appreciate having the master tool where i just don't have to deal with any of that right the only reason i bring up branded opening and specifically is because it was just a super rare like hmm. i i've literally had like two different friends of mine at locals who had 20 of this card and they weren't even collecting them they just happened to open like six boxes of the set and every box of the set has like three of them in it Mm. It, nice. It, it's an extremely easy card to find, but um, a more recent TCG release, Ghost from the Past, reprinted all the Despia stuff except for this one. Like, even okay. the Saluber guy, who was a secret rare in that set, and the set's a year old, um, he was just reprinted in Ghost from the Past as like an ultra. Like, everybody can get the entire deck by buying three structure decks and a bunch of Ghosts from the Past, 
Except for that super. So that super costs a fortune right now. And Oof. Like, that, that's what I was saying. Like, I've got, like, I know, for example, Ness, he just gets, like, every plant monster, but I'm sure he opened, like, a few packs of Dawn of Majesty as, like, judge compensation or something back in the summer of 2021 when that card came out. And he probably has, like, one or two of them laying around, and that's literally close to $100. Yeah, it's insane the amount of value uh, some of these cards can go up to, uh, as, well, any frequent players. I wasn't judging. Uh, as any players would know, it's just a case of, if you learn the game inside out, you can kind of spot which cards are going to spike. I mean, I think Back C was a card that was, that was actually before I started working for KD, but I believe that card when it came out, most people kind of ignored it. Very they good. did, yes. Uh, Max C was very, very largely ignored until Billy Brake played it in one of his decks. Those were the days where the OCG and TCG Forbidden lists were the same and so were the set contents for the most part. There was 10 cards in every set that were exclusive to the TCG at first and Max C was one of them. So all the people just net decking OCG lists from two months prior did not have Max C's to run. And you also occasionally heard the argument for people being like, well, the people in Japan don't play it, so how good can it be? Now only people in Japan play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a case of like, how many people overlooked possibly one of the, well, again, one of those cards is one of the most oppressive cards ever printed. I mean, Giant True Nades at three in GOAT format, and so many people overlooked that, that it's one of the most celebrated and played formats in the game. Ah, giant true nade. <laughs> Dimension fusions at three in goat format. Just people just didn't know at the time. At three, I remember back in uh, Invasion of Chaos days, there was the um, reasoning deck, and of course, you didn't have access to the to YouTube and stuff like that. It just didn't exist uh, when when that was around. And I remember uh, they used to have these um, UK tours. Uh, where they would travel around to different cities and then they would uh, demo, they'd have people come and play the, uh, play Yu-Gi-Oh! and then you could play against the Master. And the Master was a guy, uh, Ryan Pugh. He was a local to uh, my hometown, Bristol, and in the UK. Uh, he won the UK National Championships and went on to finish fourth in the World Championships where Invasion of Chaos was the uh, main set. Okay. Uh, so this was kind of like my first experience getting into competitive play uh around this stuff and i remember uh he was playing reasoning at this thing as well as a joke deck essentially and he was just destroying people going reasoning dark magician of chaos get reasoning dark magician of chaos oh your opponent does something dimension fusion reasoning because yeah it wasn't once per turn <laughs> that once per turn was just not printed on it uh and he was just like absolutely obliterating people uh obliterating people with this deck which was actually awful. Once you understood how it worked, this is a case of like, oh, okay, cool, eight, and then the reasoning deck doesn't work anymore. Yeah, um, until you start putting sacred cranes in it. Yeah, well, you could you could fill that with sacred cranes and stuff like that, but it was it was a fun deck. It was a different time as well, where you just where information didn't get around as fast. Uh, oh, but absolutely. it's still funny how we've gone from that and to have got to a point where a card like Max C could have been overlooked for as long as it was. Like even when we have that information, it's just uh, training. It's just training yourself to spot these cards and understand when they're good and when they're peaking. And we'll go over that in our hand trap video coming out yeah. a little bit later. That's when we'll talk about like Cypher and Gamma too, because that card was up for two years before anyone played it. I have thoughts on Gamma, and I'm looking forward to discussing those with you. <laughs> right. uh, should we wrap it up here then and yes. call it a day? Uh, just. Just before we do that, guys, if you are not subscribed to the channel, first to know when we're back live again. Uh, we also have content coming out on YouTube about three times a week. We will have various different types of content. If you've got any questions or anything, go ahead and just drop them in the comments. And uh, Myself, Dan, and one of the team will do their best to get back to you and answer your questions. If you've got stuff for content you want to see, let us know. We'd be glad to hear it. But uh, for now, it's going to be it from me and Dan. I hope you've had a great time, and we look forward to catching you on the next episode of The Climb.